Blog Talk Radio. Welcome to the War Room. We got Tez, Kim, Jimmy, PJ, B. Austin, the Hot Block Commander. How you wanna end up one or two hour show and keep the brain running with the premise of talk sports on a national level? Vote with the topic, sort of like the rubber when it's game time, they like the fad five doing prime time. Sports conglomerates speak their minds a little bit. For sports medicine and sports veterans and great. The 4 for 26, so the war ain't can wait. It's the war room with five nights at the round table. Five silly guys diversified and educated. Know it. What's good out there, War Room family? You are once again live in the War Room, brought to you by War Room Sports and the War Room Sports Podcast Network. I'm one of your hosts. I'm Dev McMillan, but I got my brothers back at the round table with me. We got B. Austin, the hot block commander, and that boy Jimmy the Blueprint at the control panels. What up, fellas? What a guan, my youth. Yo, 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 yo. (laughs) Yeah, man, we in the building. Again, once again, for the 470th time. Damn, that's a lot of shows, man. Sheesh. Anyway, the NBA Finals are twisting and turning. Oh. The Stanley Cup Final is not at it, too. And we've seen one of the lowest key, quote-unquote, biggest upsets in boxing history this past week. So we're going to discuss all of that along with everything else happening in the world of sports. So make sure you keep it locked right here for the next two hours. And if you want to get in on the conversation, all you got to do is sign in right now to the JW Philly Realty chat room at blogtalkradio.com slash the war room, or you can join us on Facebook or Twitter at War Room Sports. You can also call us directly in about five minutes when we open up the Digital Extreme Tech Hotline. As usual, that number is 323-410-0012. But before we get started, like we always do, make sure that during the week, when we're not live on the air, you check out archive episodes of our show and all of our brother and sister shows on the War Room Sports Podcast Network. Shout out to the Broad Street Line, Roy and Chris. Shout out to the mayor. Uh, after further review, shout out to the Tissue and the Tape homies, uh, Davis Backwards and Phil Matic 365, and everybody else on the network, man. But you can do that at warroomsports.com and the War Room Sports mobile app. Also on iTunes, TuneIn, Stitcher, Spreaker, Blog Talk, Radio, Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Breaker, Anchor, Overcast, Pocket Cast. You get the idea. Find us. We're out there. But uh, what up, King? I got a question for y'all before we get started, man. When They See Us, the new uh, series on Netflix. Um, is it being is it classified as a docu-series or is it just a series documenting a true story? Um. Either way. I'm not ready to talk about it because I haven't seen it yet, but I haven't seen it yet because I'm not really ready to watch Blueprint. I know you've uh, seen it or at least started to watch it. Is it as emotional yeah, as I expect it to be? Yeah, it is. It is. I, you know, and I haven't talked about it online just because, like, um, you know, everything is meant to be talked about online. But you know, yes. shout out to the people expressing outrage, and shout out to the other people who are mad at people for expressing their outrage because they'd be like, everything going on in the world, you need Netflix to tell you about. Like, you know, shout out to them too, um, because I find that hilarious. Like, people think that you can't um, compartmentalize, like you can't be mad at one thing and then you know mad at something else. But at the end of the day, man, um, I knew the story. I saw the documentary before. I, I was, you know, a little naive as what happened beforehand before I saw the documentary. A couple of years ago, I wasn't in New York, and, and you know, um, I was of a certain age when that happened, where it didn't really affect me personally. Right. right. Although now I see how it could have. Um, but when I saw the documentary by um, Burns, uh, Ken Burns' daughter made one a couple of years ago. I did see that, and I was like, damn. So, and I think most of it was taken from that. So it is very emotional, man, and it, it'll it'll piss you off. It's, it's a difficult watch. Yeah, and that's what I expected because you know when, when we were when we were thinking about rocking it this weekend, I said that like like I've been in a real up upbeat mood lately, and I know like it's, yeah. I was like I don't I just, I'm just not in the mood for a downer like that, so I'm gonna have to catch that at some other time or watch it pretty soon. I'll probably end up watching it this weekend or yeah. or you know along the lines of next week, but you know when it dropped and all the hype was out there. 
I just didn't have it in me, man. <laughs> I, I, I didn't want to. Yeah, it's, it's um, a tough watch. It's a definitely a tough yeah. watch. But she killed it in terms of uh, producing something that's entertaining or what have you. Because I hear after you I know, watch a couple so, episodes, I'm probably going to go, like, hug my son. Like, even if he oh sleeps, just go yeah. wake especially him up and hug him for no with, reason. With, yo, with you having a son, and, and, and you as well, be Austin, y'all might not let him out your sight no more after watching this junk. It's like, it's, it's like that, but, you know. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, I, 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 I'm aware, and I, I, <laughs> dude, I'm much, I'm similar to you. There, there's certain things that I can't watch, um, just based on my disposition. Like I still haven't watched the Nat Turner movie because I want to live a productive life, and I don't want to go to jail. <laughs> so it's not good for me to see that because I may act on it. Art imitates life, and life imitates art. So I kind of stay out of the way. Uh, that's one of those things where I think I'll become too emotionally invested, to be honest. Yeah. All right. Well, you go. You make sure you go ahead and watch Birth of a Nation, though, because Bull need it, because the whole black race sold him out. So you need them funds. <laughs> <laughs> However you end up. <laughs> All right, man. So let's get into what we're here to do and let's talk some hot topics some sports topics brought to you of course by my bookie war room let's talk about it for a minute let's talk about how much cash you can make sports betting at my bookie stanley cup final is not at two games apiece the nba fi- finals are on fire as well so if you still haven't checked out my bookie what are you waiting for just lay down some cash on the biggest games in sports join us and thousands of other online players placing bets at mybookie.ag Tired of getting a runaround from those other services when it's time to get paid? That's why we urge you to join my bookie. If you win, they pay fast, no hassle. You're basically wasting your time sports betting anywhere else. They even have in-game live betting so you can place wagers after the game starts. I know that sounds crazy. So join now, and my bookie will match your first deposit up to $1,000. So just use the promo code WARROOM, all caps, W-A-R-R-O-O-M, That'll activate the offer. Visit mybookie.ag today. Play, win, and get paid. Period, my dudes. All right, look, man. <laughs> As I said, um, I guess you know we're we're people of a different era, especially in heavyweight boxing. So I don't think a lot of us looked at it that this way. But I'm hearing a lot of boxing purists. Even though B. Austin ain't say nothing about white supremacy. We are actually talking about boxing this time. Um, (laughs) I'm hearing a lot of boxing purists say that the Anthony Joshua loss to Andy Ruiz Jr. this past Saturday night was one of the biggest upsets in boxing history and, and gave everyone shades of Tyson Douglas. I didn't get that out of it. I kind of found it laughable when the comparisons were being made. But um, what were, what were you guys' thoughts on this? The fight in general, even if you didn't watch it, anything you've read about it, heard about it, know about it, what do you think about that in general? And then what do you think about the Tyson uh, Douglas comparisons? I, I heard Anthony. I heard Anthony Ruiz is to boxing as Paul Pierce is to basketball in terms of his his body. Like he's deceptively athletic, uh, quick mm-hmm. and strong, and people judge him merely based on the fact that he looks like he drinks a 12-pack a day uh, and does no cardio ever. But he's actually a very good boxer. Um, it still still shouldn't be in the same league as Anthony Joshua, who, who officially became an African as opposed to an African. Um, he is definitely falling into those realms after getting knocked out by the uh, Latino brother, uh, he is an African. But I, I, I don't Stephen know whether a. Smith, that... Stephen A. Smith called him Butterbean. Disrespecting him. <laughs> yeah, he did. Damn, you did. I don't, I don't know that it's on the Buster Douglas level because Buster never did anything else again in life after that knockout. So I don't know if it's on that level. We'll see. Well, if, if you're, I was about to say, if you're looking at it from that angle, then it remains to be seen because we got to see what, you know, Andy Ruiz is going to end up doing. But people were saying the upset 
was just as big. And I, you know, and the heavyweight division now probably has three names that are like universally known. And I'm not counting like the old guys, like, you know, Klitschko, um, you know, who's still out there trying to do something. Um, but basically three names that are universally known. So the guys, and, and, and I had this conversation a, few, a couple of weeks ago with some people because they were comparing this era of heavyweights to another one. As a matter of fact, a gentleman we all know made a comment saying, you know, Mike Tyson fought a bunch of nobodies and, um, you know, so the same criticism that a guy like Deontay Wilder is getting should, should fit Mike Tyson as well. And then it, it shout it, out to BJ Willie G. No doubt. And then the then the debate kind of morphed into not just the man Tyson didn't fight anybody, but saying that whole era didn't really have anybody. And then, you know, I had to finally go in there and name like twenty two boxers that were universal household names. And of course, after you already make that point, you're gonna discount everyone named because you got a point to protect. Anyway, you can go much deeper with the names in that particular era than you can right now. So I never got the feeling that Joshua or Deontay Wilder for that, um, for that matter, who's also undefeated um, Joshua was, I never got the, the feeling that even though they're dominating the heavyweight division now, I never got the feeling that they were like, should come up with the all time greats. I never got the feeling that they were just the all out baddest men on the planet. Like when Mike Tyson was going through people in the late eighties up until he got to Buster Douglas, come on, man. Mike Tyson was the baddest man on the planet. Everybody feared him. He had grown men come in the ring and just fall on their butts because they didn't want to get hit by him. It was different. People feared Mike Tyson. I, I don't see Wilder or Joshua being feared like that. And at that time, I don't think it was anybody out there who thought that Mike Tyson could or would lose a fight. So I cannot – I think that's one of the Ever. biggest upsets in sports, let alone boxing. That might still be my number one upset in sports. Now, what Mike Tyson did after that, so the end of his career, kind of takes away some of that luster. But you could also, you know, credit that upset for maybe – sending him back down a spiraling path that pretty much, you know, did what it did to his career. Even though if you read his book, like Jimmy and I, it probably wasn't the loss. He probably was going that way either way you slice it. What do you think, Jimmy? You know, here's here's my perspective. Like, I don't think it's as big as Tyson for the reasons you named in terms of what Mike meant to the sport. I mean, Mike Tyson is still talked about to this day uh, in terms of boxing. Everything is like a comparison point to when Tyson was heavyweight champion. So right. it's just not the same. That That's one thing. The second thing is I think, um, you know, a, a, a Butterbean and Stephen A. Smith called Ruiz. People don't realize Ruiz is a talented boxer. Buster Douglas was a journeyman. Ruiz has one right. loss on his record to a guy, Parker, who who most people believe when they watch the fight that he won that fight and got cheated. So, Plus, Jimmy, you know, the it, argument, even if you the slice argument it, like made, he, he was still a top four ranked fighter, even though he was a replacement fighter. And yeah, he's a top fight. four. He's a top four fighter. He's a top five. Like five. He's top five in the Jack world. Though. He's a top five heavyweight in the world. So losing world to crazy. a top five heavyweight in the world is just different than losing a Buster in uh, Japan after hanging out with um Bobby Brown and, and doing mushrooms the night before. Like it's right. just a whole different thing to me. The actual now, fight, I watched the whole fight. Go ahead. Mm-hmm. No, I was about to say, now, the circumstances were kind of the same. I mean, Buster wasn't a replacement, but he was supposed to be a tune-up for the mega fight with Evander Holyfield, which he derailed by upsetting Tyson, just the way Andy Ruiz was supposed to be a tune-up for the mega fight between Anthony Joshua and Deontay Wilder, which a lot of people are very, very, very upset. Right, they're, they're very upset right now because you know, besides, like, throwing Tyson Fury into the mix with one of these dudes, that's the only fight people wanted to see. At least when yeah, Tyson yeah. won it. You really wanted to see the Holyfield fight, but once you, you know, once you knew it was over and it wasn't going to happen then, there were a lot of other big heavyweight fights that you wanted to see. 
I, a lot of people, Jimmy, like they talk a lot about the whole thing. I don't. There's a lot of people out there who's never even seen Anthony Joshua fight, including this weekend. Yeah. <laughs> so there's no yeah. way that this is. I, I, I've way. seen him fight several times, and he's probably, from an athletic standpoint, one of the more talented guys I've ever seen, athletically speaking. Right. Um, sharp Pretty fighter, deep. but that's right. that to me was which, which was weird about this fight. This fight seemed off, to, you know, to begin with watching it. Because it's not that he lost. Anybody can get hit with one punch and be knocked out. He got beat up. Like, he hit the deck I mean? like, four I, times. I've seen cats like I, I, I seen, I seen cats get hit with a punch and catches them out of the, out of the blue and they, they you know, I mean, like this wasn't that. Like, right. I, re- I remember a good example that I was when I seen Rockman court court. I dominate. When I seen Rockman court Lennox, like, mm-hmm. like he wasn't no better fighter than Lennox. He just caught him. Right. Right. Um. Well, we got just at that, that weight, me... at, at heavyweight, everybody has a puncher's chance. Shout out to the name of our episode. Absolutely. Uh, this week, everybody has a puncher's chance at the heavyweight yeah. division. Everybody. There's no everybody. limit on your weight, everybody. so you can, you know, be as but, big as you but at the same time, he got beat up, and Ruiz was in his bag. He was in his, you know, what I mean, shout out to the fat man out there like, putting the paws on him because he was, he was beat no, his no. ass. Excuse my language. Yeah. But, uh, <laughs> you made us all so proud. <laughs> yeah, he 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 laid he put the beat on him. So, you know what I'm saying. But and the thing, but Ruiz is a talented boxer. He's not the most athletic guy, uh, you know, as we keep mentioning. But he's skilled. Even the cats that they were doing the fight was like, man, dude is skill. Same thing with Tyson Fury. Tyson Fury is probably one of the most skilled dudes I've seen. But he's just like right. always out of shape looking type dude. Yeah, I was about to say he looks like Jared Dudley. Oh. <laughs> I want to I want to see Ruiz, Ruiz fight a. Uh, Tyson Fury, that might be an amazing tech, tactical Jared fight. Jared Dudley versus Paul Pierce putting me. the paws on each other. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but they got the skill set, though. They nice with the man, though. And that's the thing. I'm the two said, dudes... Work out for what? The two dudes at the top of the heavyweight division, at least the two that were, um, Deontay Wilder and Anthony Joshua, both look like, you know what I'm saying... Uh, heavyweight champions. They look yeah. like bodybuilders. What, what they call them, Adonis. Yeah. Pizzle. They look yeah. like that, but any if you look at both of them, their skills aren't up to par. Cats like Jimmy just said, like Tyson Fury and and you know the out of shape. Um, Yo, uh, Tyson Joshua's Fury defense punch, is trash. He would he would have took Wilder's belt. Remember he uh he gave him a he gave him a little little lesson in the ring. Right, hitting with and the huge specialist move with Wilder. Like I remember, every time we talk about Deontay Wilder, I'm like, man, his nickname—I mean, his last name—is so fitting because I think he's wild. He's a heavyweight that throws haymakers, but if he catches you with that right hand, you might die Dog. in the ring. He's that strong. Yo, his right <laughs> hand is like a building. He hits with buildings, like, huh? Exactly. Take this off but the face. When you watch him from a technical standpoint, like if there was anybody in the division, like if you had a Tyson Fury who was in shape and, and built like them dudes, but was technical like Tyson Fury, they probably would dispatch of these two dudes easily. Floyd Mayweather and his camp offered Anthony Joshua a chance to train at his gym because they told him um, after one fight that they basically told him that his defense was trash. And if he came and worked with them, they could make him a much better defensive fighter. He decided to be loyal and stick to the guys that he was with. And now look at him. Instead of instead yeah. of in a few months getting the biggest payday of your career, you got people you got a dude that people are calling Butterbean putting you on a canvas four times and taking your belt. I mean, but that 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 story is is a little bit deeper than that because he really don't bang with Floyd like that because Anthony Joshua is a uh, is a um he's a very he's a very Afrocentric uh, woke type dude, so he don't really bang with Floyd. It's, it's, <laughs> Yeah, yeah. My man is like, like pan African. trying to uh, jump on the, on the train to Las Vegas. Yeah, like he that. he he is a he. Cause I remember he got in trouble before. He, 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 he was talking to another fighter and told the boy that the black man is God, and the boy like oh. recorded him and put him out there. And he he you know, I don't think there's nothing wrong with what he said, but it it became a little bit of a controversy. So he he um, he don't mess with Floyd on that type trip. So, so I see on the train happened. to Vegas. So Floyd was like, "Well then, yeah, take the yeah, whole thing." He was like, "No." <laughs> yeah, but I mean, but the thing about Floyd is, as cooney as Floyd is, the one thing that no one has ever questioned was his work ethic and his uh, his ability his to uh, be a pugilist. No, not, 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 not. Yeah. So did y'all hear yeah. the latest? Because you know all the fallout from the fight. 
you know, everything is coming out. A lot of people saying they didn't think he was 100%. Um, well, now reports are coming out that Joshua got knocked out in sparring before he got knocked out by Andy Ruiz. They said he uh, yeah. he was knocked out by 28-year-old 5'10 heavyweight, some dude that's nicknamed the Tank. Um, he has a professional record of 19 wins, seven defeats, and four draws. <laughs> So he was one of the dudes they Yo. brought in to prepare him for, for Ruiz. And dude, who also has a bit of a doo-doo body, knocked him out too. So he kind of gave him a glimpse of what was to come. And maybe Joshua he don't shit. match up well against, like, doo-doo bodies. <laughs> that must be it. I knocked Joshua with a... <laughs> <laughs> Yo, I'm about to line him up. But no, um, I heard that story, right? And the crazy part is, like, so the the skeptic in me is like, yeah, all right, whatever, F O H, but he did seem off. Like, I'll give him that. Like, so it, it's it's one of those things where maybe they throwing this out there because I can see how that's believable based upon his performance. Well, it was fighting for the mean, it's, it's nothing. You're always going to hear the stuff that they weren't going to tell you after the fact. You know why? Because they probably in situations like that, you think whatever is ailing you is not going to be a problem because you're like, all right, a 60% Joshua is supposed to dominate Andy Ruiz. Uh, a 60% Mike Tyson is supposed to still murder Buster Douglas, his wife and kids. Like... <laughs> So it's like the the excuse if they sound like excuses because they start coming out afterwards. They better start learning something different. They better start throwing these excuses out there just in case. So you're like, oh yeah, they already said. But here's the thing though, because I think like I think I think in the grand scheme of all of this, like you know, and I get it, I get it because of the mega fight, I get it. But the fact of the matter is, when you really dig deep into it, he's been he's been he's been protected over this time, fighting at home. Like he's constantly always fighting at home, fighting nobody. Like he he hasn't really fought anyone outside of Klitschko, who also knocked him down, but he did get up. Um, I feel like Ruiz is kind of being disrespected in all this, um, and not yeah. by Joshua because Joshua himself said, "Hey, Larry, let the man shine. It's his time." But the thing I think it's disrespectful that they comparing him to Buster Douglas. <laughs> yeah, like here, here's what's crazy about this. So they 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 signed the rematch up. Right. Well, um, if Boy came out and, and watched him next time, I wouldn't be shocked. That'd be that'd be interesting. <laughs> um, I think a lot of people probably don't want to see it because they still want to see that fight. You know how boxing is, though. How they hype things up. You take one loss, and that's the end of your career. Or, or the mega fight's never going to happen. Or this or that. So uh, you know, he go get that rematch, and he wins, and then we probably get to see the fight that we want to see, which is probably not going to be what anybody wants it to be. I'm not even going to say expects it to be. Because like we said, if you know boxing, you know pretty much that neither one of these two dudes, talking about Wilder and Joshua, can really, you know, they're not real pugilists. They're just big six, six, mm-hmm. six, seven dudes that can hit like a ton of bricks. And, you know, in the heavyweight division these days, that's all you need. Because just like Wilder and Fury, like Jimmy said, Fury gave dude a boxing lesson that night. But when you can hit a dude with a building in the in the later rounds and, and you know, have him fighting to pull his soul back in so he can get up and finish the fight, then that's an advantage that you have over everybody. So so we'll see. We'll see what happens on the rematch. A um, little Listen, bit of man, news. I know. I know. Oh, go ahead. Okay. Real, real quick, I just want to say I remember, um, like I said, when Rockman caught Lewis and, and, and stretched his boots. But then when they got back up in that square – that square circle again. Lennox Lewis gave that boy a boxing lesson and put a cut above his eye that I think might still be bleeding right to this minute. Yo, no matter and what anybody ever reminisces about Rockman, the only thing I will ever remember him for is the softball that was under his skin. Yo, <laughs> get your ass Rockman like I said Rockman. Yo, that was I'm one of the wrong. nastiest things I've ever seen in my life, and there was no blood involved. It, but but yeah, how do you a, grow a softball a on your head and not boy die? Had a and boy had a sledgehammer in his head. <laughs> oh, head shark ass. Yo, but, yo, I, yo, they, I never yo, they straight beat a tumor in his head. Yo, you have some kind of hematoma. I don't know. I'm just making words up. That might be what that was. Either way, I've never seen anything like that in my life. It was the scariest thing I've ever seen. I thought he should have just dropped dead right there in the ring. I didn't know what that was. 
You got a brain going out. Yeah. All right, so Roger Goodell is um he's back in the news and he's reiterating a stance of wanting to reduce the preseason schedule. Um and he's not late because the league and the players association have begun prelim- preliminary talks on a new CBA. So this is a good a time as any for him to start publicly stating things that he wants. Now I think fans would be all for this. And he's he's back on that thing where he wants to not only reduce the preseason, he wants to maybe make the regular season 18 games. But, you know, the players are kind of against that. I don't think they care about the preseason part of it. But if you think about it, of course, that's more entertainment for us. That's two more games. But the players are like, look, half of us can barely get through the 16-game schedule. And you're going to ask us to play two more meaningful games. And, you know, they, they've always thought it not to be fair. I kind of think at some point he's going to end up getting what he wants. Y'all got any thoughts on this? Um, oh, well, I, I think this um, – if it ends up – if it ends up you're shortening the preseason, the quality of the first four games is going to be dookie, stain, terrible. So I am of the opinion that they need to keep things where they are and don't increase don't increase the regular season. I it, think it, I kind it, of disagree with that, B, because half of these dudes don't play in any if, you know, they play in a little bit of the preseason, so they're not really playing in those four games anyway. Um, and they feel like they can get – my my concern was always the dudes who are trying to make a team dudes on the brink, they need those games to be able to, you know, impress the coach enough to make the roster. But he was even saying, you know, he talked with some coaches that feel like four games isn't necessary um, to get ready for a season and to evaluate and develop players. So he's claiming that they're saying they don't necessarily have four for the reasons that I was concerned. But first of all, the first, I mean, not four, like you said, but the first one or two be do to anyway because those dudes don't play and get a rhythm in the preseason they have one preseason game that's semi-serious and that's like what is that game three when they go a little bit into the third quarter or something yeah, like that that's it. So I, I don't think you need it I just don't think you know if I'm looking from a player's perspective and if I want to defend them dudes I don't know if you tack on two more real games at the end of anything I, it might just be overkill. You can shorten the preseason without, yeah, without adding to the regular season. And stop yeah, and charging really regular season that. that's, for these preseason games. That's what I thought he was doing when I first saw that shortening the preseason. I didn't realize at the same time he was trying to like add on more regular season games. Like you, more money. being greedy now, beloved. Because mm-hmm. initially I'm like, okay, I could see cutting the preseason. Um, you know, if that's times for people to give a chance to show how they can play. But at the same time, with these injuries and where football is going, you know, um, it makes sense. But if you're adding two more regular season games on, which will be more competitive because they're not that later in the year because you just technically say they're earlier, but I don't know. That's not really doing anything um, for the player's safety. So it's right. just a money that you claim you're so Yeah, that you're so big on. It's, n- it's doing nothing for that. That's a great point, Jim. But listen, and now, yo, let's think about the stats. Though your stats is already out of control. Imagine the stats, out, you know, when they got two more games to pretty much um have these bums break all of our great players' records. Right, right. They should just leave that alone. Um, the preseason, I don't mind them cutting that down to two games if his claim is true, and and the coaches have enough ways to evaluate players to make the roster. Then that's fine. If you're gonna if you're gonna assure these players that. Cutting off these games is not going to change anything about whether you make this team or not, then I can live with that. Because the way they're doing it now, a lot of teams get together and have like a practice for a whole week during the preseason and, you know, during training camp. And then at the end of those Mm -hmm. weeks, they scrimmage with referees. So, you know, it's kind of like a real game. So they, they're, they're actually getting that action but then you throw it into the mix in a preseason game, 
if you look at the preseason game versus what they're already doing, all they're doing is trying to make more money because you're charging people yeah. and you're charging them regular season prices, even though the stadiums don't generally fill up. You're charging them regular season prices and you're getting concessions for people to come out and watch garbage and from cats that, you know, you've never even heard of. So, yeah, get rid of it. I don't watch the preseason anyway. So if you look at it from an entertainment standpoint, F it. <laughs> F eat. All right. Um, just a quick update. Stanley Cup Finals knotted up two to two. We're on um we're on Title Town Watch. We're trying to see if Boston gets another one. Uh, Jimmy has been outspoken in um his hater aid and he does not want to see the Buck- city of Boston get another championship. <laughs> Buck Falston. Um, <laughs> Buck Falston. Um this so far, they've just been taking turns. And Boston has home court adv- home ice advantage. So if they keep doing that, they're going to be having another parade uh, in the city of Boston. Boston won game one, Blues countered in game two. Boston won game three, Blues countered in game four. The Blues are going to have to, you know, step up, get a win in Boston to, to totally switch this series around um, if they're going to be going back and forth like that. All right, so our quote of the week comes from former Toronto Raptor, current San Antonio Spur, DeMar DeRozan. Now, he was uh, interviewing with Taylor Rooks of the Bleacher Report, um, and she was basically asking him about his feelings toward the Raptors right now. And he explained to her how he was pulling for his former team because a lot of his friends, including his best friend, Kyle Lowry, still play on the team. But he went a little deeper with his thoughts and kind of gave himself credit for what's going on right now. Quote, honestly, I don't even think I said this. I probably said it to my own inner circle. But if it wasn't for all the years and groundwork that I did before then, none of them things would have been possible. Yes, I fought. I sacrificed. I pushed the limits to where I had to be the sacrificial lamb. You just have to sit back and understand, like, you know, you were the reason so many things was even possible. Then he said, to their credit, probably felt like it was time to see what we could get to make that next jump. And he said, what we can get. So he's still so in love with Toronto. He's still calling the team we. Um, y'all got any problems with what he said? Because, you know, a lot of talking heads tried to break it down and call him crazy. Um, skip base, baseless. He don't like him showing any love to his former team since he's a Spurs fan. And he, he's basically saying he should be counting his lucky stars that he's a Spur. So I don't take anything he says seriously, but y'all got any issues with what he said? Um, I think it's hilarious that I mean, Boy really loves that city and 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 loves that organization, yo. It's kind of like it's kind of weird to see that in this day and age, when cats really don't care about teams and organizations. I'm not saying it's a good thing. I think it's kind of weird. Um, I think that there, I think that it's kind of drawn but there is a little truth in that too though there's a yeah. little truth in terms of him like setting the table to 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 get them to where you know they are but at the same time you're just a, a piece of the puzzle that was used to get you know a, a better piece but yeah. you know, i mean but but um, that you know point point being like like you said if he didn't put in that work he wouldn't have been good enough to even be in that trade even and, though and that's exactly, but that's my point that's my, my point yeah. is that there is some truth into what he's saying but Sometimes even if there's a little truth into it, it doesn't mean you have to say it either. Because <laughs> I guess he's thinking about it like, look, I was the best player on the team, so I was the only dude that they could even mention to get the Spurs to bite on a trade. So you know, I you know I was the sacrificial lamb. They had to trade their best player to get an even better player. Of course, he didn't say all that. You know, he would have been being too honest if he said all that. Um, I don't know where the hell B. Austin went, but that's. Um, <laughs> That's our quote of the week. We're going to do a stat of the week real quick, and then we're going to get to the phone lines because we see a couple people on the phone lines. Stat of the week. 2016, Craig Telfer is ranked number 200 in Division II men's track and field. 2017, Craig Telfer is ranked number 390 in Division II men's track and field. 2018, Craig Telfer transitions to C.C. Telfer. 2019, C.C. Telfer is crowned national champion 
in the 400 hurdles. <laughs> Any thoughts here? Because this person, who is now C.C. Telfer, um, is basically saying, shout out to Alex and Sid and what he created there, um, is basically saying, there's no advantages to me, you know, being born a man. So, like, for all I sacrificed, I'm, and I'm paraphrasing here, Jim, for all I sacrificed here, taking testosterone and all of that kind of stuff, there's a lot of women who are better than me. So let me give you some 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 solid quotes before you chime in. Said first of all, my height, how tall I am, is a disadvantage because the wind is hitting us so hard. The taller you are, the harder you fall. Basically, there's wind resistance. Um, Telfer is over six feet tall. Um, then she said another dis- disadvantage: the fact that the hurdles are so close. The distance between the hurdles is smaller in the women's competition. They're about six inches shorter. Um, in height than the men's and they're more than a half a meter closer together and then there are people who say I have the benefit of testosterone but no I have no benefit I'm on hormone suppression it doesn't help it's another disadvantage she said cis women which is cisgender I'm losing all these terms man I, I can't keep up but cis women are producing more testosterone than the average trans female So it's crazy. I'm the crazy one to be the weakest female, the weakest link to the chain, to be competing against the top ones. I should be fingered as the stupid one for wanting to do that in the first place. Any thoughts on the ascension from what the ranks were when he was a dude to what the, you know, to what the results are now that that he transitioned to a woman? My question is, if that's the case, what what does... um... What do they think is the reason for their success? They just somehow <laughs> I'm trying to figure out like is is if they have no advantage according to what they are saying mm-hmm. where does come from? Like I, they, I don't know, because they're claiming that she lost weight when she transitioned, she lost muscle mass. She's suppressing testosterone. So, you know, they're given all of these reasons of why this isn't a thing, but the results are crazy. Like you were pretty much, and I don't want to be harsh, but you were pretty much trash when you were a dude. And now, you know, you're competing at the highest level now that you, you've transitioned to being a female. Excuse me, you can't say that no more. A woman. Um, however, this person did come in fifth in the 100 meters. So, you know, still showing signs of being trash, but you're competing now. Like, think about, like, you probably wouldn't even have qualified for the 100 meter if you were still running as a guy. So, you know, it, it all, it means something, man. I mean, you can do medicine, you can only do but so much. I, I don't know what the time is. I don't know what the time is, but she finished fifth in the 100, but she was crowned national champion in the 400 meter hurdles. Um, yeah, you probably missed the, the whole stat was in 2016, Craig Telfair was ranked 200 in division two men's track and field in 2017. Craig Telfair Telfer is, was ranked 390 in 2018. Craig Telfer transitions to CC Telfer. And in 2019, CC Telfer is crowned national champion. Yo, so he's, but, but CC tells me. <laughs> <laughs> claiming it as Thank you, Kawhi. Thank you, Kawhi. Kawhi caught. Yeah, Kawhi captured it all. Listen, man. I mean, all all I'm gonna Yo. say is, man, I don't, I want to know like what happened. Like, you know, how did you go from being a waste man to now all of a sudden you competing at the, you know, with the, in the upper echelons of the uh, same sport? So. <laughs> Yeah. It's just it's just yeah. interesting, man. You know, where where, where are we? What, what's going to happen in the future? Like, I think it's kind of unfair, but some would say it's not unfair. But we already, guys, we already had this debate about you Fallon guys. Fox in a combat sport. Fallon Fox almost killed somebody um, in the MMA in uh, women's MMA. So, you, ah, man, you guys, both, uh, you guys are both readers, uh, and and I trust. Some, somewhat um, 
interested and experienced with the study of history. Um, at, at the downfall of quite a number of civilizations, we saw where certain things, including gender roles, became reversed and things that certain people would call perversions um, became the norm. Yo, I, 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 listen, man, history tells it all. I don't even got to say anything. Man. You guys read the books. You heard the stories. It's a wrap. <laughs> Get the spaceship, man. Get the I mean, this is right never going to be a controversial topic, man. I, I hear people argue about it all the time, but that's our, our stat of the week. And before we um, go to the phone lines, uh, we see you back in there, Tobias, uh, but it doesn't look like you press one. So we don't know if you're just listening or you want to talk. So if you want to talk, definitely press one and we, we're coming to you right now. Um, but real quick, uh, you guys can check out our website at warroomsports.com. If you want to call in and speak with us about any of today's topics, dial the Digital Extreme Tech Hotline, 323-410-0012. Press 1 when prompted. If you're already listening from your phone, just press 1 if you want to talk. Tobias is there, but you still haven't pressed 1. So as soon as you press 1 and we see that on the switchboard, we will come to the uh, to the phone line. So until then, we can talk about, Jimmy, what happened this week. While everybody was on the grizzline. Yes, sir. And for those who have been living under a rock and don't know what happened while you were on the grind is brought to you by Sports the Book. If you're tired of reading the same old sports books with the same old sports list rankings and imaginary style lineups, stop playing yourself. Get Sports the Book. Smart people only read the sports. You get it at sportsthebook.com or our hub, willemsports.com. But do not. Miss the movement. Trying to talk about uh, what happened while you on the right? Let's let's um, talk to Tobias real quick, and then let's talk about what happened. Oh, you want to bring him over? Okay. Yeah, he's been waiting for a minute. Tobias, what's up? That's because Tobias always call in before we tell him John open. But <laughs> hey, <laughs> what's up? By the time I do call in, they be making me wait. So you don't make the white man wait though. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, we get like you know, we get like two white man calls a year. <laughs> I know, hey, uh, you know, uh, had to put a couple of zingers in a group chat today because I look at quarterback stuff and I was like, what's going to happen first? Jimmy G plays the full 16 game season or Sauce Money comes out with a second CD? You know, uh, yeah. <laughs> 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 you trying to say, you try to say Garoppolo, you trying to say Garoppolo is never playing a full season, huh? Dude, dude plays five games and that thing, you know, he's a second coming of Montana somehow. Uh, Yo, it's football's getting to the point where you like you have to have a quality backup. Like I don't even expect a starter to play sixteen games no more. Like that's unrealistic in twenty nineteen. Well Jim, can he get eight? if he go to eighteen games, they're gonna start sitting people for load management. Yeah, they're gonna crazy. start yeah. Yeah, they're gonna start you with Popovich and quarterbacks. Uh huh. Eight, eight. Do you know who started to become my least favorite NFL quarterback? Uh, white privilege Baker Jimmy Mayfield. Jimmy Swinson? Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, actually, it's white privilege Baker Mayfield. This guy, uh, you know what? He it's like he slams his team. Every time Duke Johnson mad because Duke wants a trade, but what do you expect Duke to do? You sign two running backs, and uh, Duke know. wants to play. He, he, Baker Mayfield has been on TV lately, talking like a ten-year vet, like. <laughs> I mean, yeah, we, it, that know, could be taken too late. We've been might, here before. They might be looking for leadership from their quarterback position. If that's what they're looking for, they're definitely getting it, no matter what form it's I mean, in. But he, he pretty much thinks Odell he can say whatever he wants right now. Odell has bought in. Odell has said he's never seen anything like that. I don't know if Odell's like trying low key to take shots at Eli, or he, he really like likes the young boy. <laughs> he did uh, He's taking shots at Eli Arms. He's like, yo, I, the ball comes in so fast. Like, he he, he, he taking shots. <laughs> Eli, be, Eli was so know that right now, years, so. mm-hmm. I, I know I know Baker's being crowned as up-and-coming guy, but people got to realize they got these expectations now on him and the team, and they have a tougher schedule. 
And they got a road game at New England, which I can't wait to watch. Uh, but and, that, and, let's, let's, and the funny Tobias, thing is, any Tobias other Tobias season, boys, I would be rooting for Tobias the Browns. Boys. But now that they talk so much, <laughs> I want to see them get Joshua. And, 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 and hey, Tobias, let me, let me, let me, let me uh, speak like Tobias for a second and say, let's be honest here. I don't care who yeah. the Browns put on their roster. Is anybody really putting expectations on the Browns? They can switch and complete teams with the Patriots and coaches. They're still They're the Browns. They'll brown it up. They'll brown it up. Yeah, yeah, yeah they the are the Browns. Everybody's hyped for the winning division, but we know Pittsburgh will win the division again. Uh, Let me say, they and, can and put Jesus and his wise men on the, on the offense and the disciples. Yeah. I mean, everybody else at the well, table got a starting spot. And they still lose. Yeah, and you know, and like, and like even at the back, like, gotta go with basketball real quick. Everybody keeps talking about it's like people just don't want to admit Toronto is good. <laughs> you know, hey, go to State Town, everybody else, they're cursed. They'll win tomorrow. Uh, I'm like, at the end of the day, it's going to take more than rolling the balls out to beat these guys. And I think the thing that people are missing on. Is that people, Toronto keeps hearing that y'all say they're going to lose the Golden State back up to the backup. And that when, when Golden State goes small, Siakam can score in the post. He ain't Capella. Marcus All ain't Capella. He ain't Myers Leonard from Portland. These guys can score. And that means Draymond has to play defense on that guy and he can't play center field. And, and see, and, and I think that people just want to say, well, these guys will roll the ball out, but they were there. They won three games four years ago. I thought they blew a 3-1 lead as a 73-win team. But it, it's, like they, it's like people have a hard time saying, damn, the Raptors are a good team. Yeah, but you know what? They're playing a back-to-back defending champions. Like, So it's one of those things where um, we just talked about boxing. When you're watching a guy who's supposed to win, you're just expecting him to turn it on at any minute. So I agree with you, Toronto is good, but I also think that I understand why people are waiting for it to, like, because it's hard to think about Golden State losing when most of us has penciled them in for the championship before the season started. Yeah. And that's the thing. And people are going to believe it until they no longer see it because, to be truthful, they've done it so many times before. Like, they could be playing yeah. terribly and score 22 points over the next three minutes. So you got to respect the fact that it's possible, but it's going to be difficult. I mean, with all the, the injuries, they got a lot. You know, the, the team, first of all, the team chemistry is different because there's a lot of different faces on the court right now. So it's definitely it's going like to be watching difficult. the Patriots in the Super Bowl. The Patriots could be losing the first three quarters. You know what I'm saying? Like, um, shout to the Falcons. Could be getting smacked around. Everybody's waiting for them to make their run. They're waiting right. for the Patriots because that I mean because they've 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 done it. Happen. But but Tobias, there's going to be one day when the Patriots may be in the Super Bowl again, and we're going to be waiting for that run, and that run is never going to come, and somebody's ultimately going to stomp them out, and we're going to be like, you know wow, what? we didn't expect that, but it's not because you know they haven't proven it before. Got to give them that this, respect. Right? Think about this: Golden State has some good fortune. The Patriots, if Russell Wilson threw an accurate pass, they ran the football, the Patriots won win. The Falcons ran the football, the Patriots won that Super Bowl. Somehow, Michael Jenkins, or Jennings, I'm sorry, what, like, I, I forgot what the – Michael Butler, I'm sorry, ran up the ball, and that somehow made Tom Brady the greatest of all time. I ain't no Tom Brady play deep at the back, but anyway. Uh, <laughs> Yo, but, but, but Tobias, Tobias, hold up, hold up, hold up, though. If David Tyree um, doesn't have, like, an a un, unearthing experience yep. to make that catch – they win that bowl. So, I mean, it works both ways. And that's what I'm saying. And, like, Golden State has a good fortune with injury, and they play Cleveland four straight times. It's not like they play an assortment of teams from the Eastern Conference. They play the same franchise. And, well, uh, the best and, player you know, of the generation is yeah. dominating. So. And, 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 and now, they're, they're, now they're, they're the ones the, they're 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 the one with Michael the Michael Jordan of this era, and there was nobody better for them to play. So you gotta and now mad they are the one with the injury. So, so like everything, everything regresses to the yeah. to the mean. Like now they have injuries. So now what? And speaking of the Patriots, even two seasons ago when they lost the Super Bowl to the Eagles, they came back in that game, took the lead. And oh yeah, they made it out there. Any Eagle fan out there who sit here and tell me that when they took that lead, you didn't think it was over? 
<laughs> you're lying. Because that kind of stuff happens to the city of Philadelphia. I'm like, man, we played this good, and these dudes still took the lead on us. Like, come on. So it, you, know, you got to give them this too. respect until they don't do it again. Toronto's coach is doing a good job also. And uh, I don't I don't know if Siakam's second or third season, but it's crazy like he was playing 10 minutes a game the year before. And look how much he developed. And, and this coach is doing a good job with that team. Like he started fans bleak in the third quarter. He just hound and pest, pest with Steph Curry. And, yeah, Steph Curry went off, but G had to depend on – but but G also needed uh, the Hall of Famer, a.k.a. Baron the Charles Barkley, uh, a.k.a. Ben, the ben best defender ever, Draymond Green, to give you something. What was he at? He is 35 the new, years old. Um, Van Vliet, the new Teron Lou. Is Steph Curry going to be stepping over him before this series, though? <laughs> hey. <laughs> <laughs> I see. And here's the thing also. People say, well, Durant comes back. The dude has a play in a month. He was playing flip flop yesterday. Clay Thompson has a hamstring issue. And the first thing that crossed my mind was I think it was when the Pistons played the Lakers and Magic pulled his hamstring in that series. He tried to come back. He couldn't do nothing. So you mean to tell me that Clay, whose game is based on running off green the whole time and moving laterally on defense, is magically going to be great on Friday night? We'll see. <laughs> I would have doubts, <laughs> you know, judging by his no. style. Of play, but we shall, we shall see. And hey, hey. KD, would, KD would prove a lot if he came back after a month and was just KD again. So we'll see, man. We never know, but it's hey, definitely hey, reason hey, to hey, doubt them. But I say this before I go. Hmm? I say this before I go. I, I talk about the transgender track athletes, whatever the. The men, biological men running as women. Forgive me, LGBTQ. I cannot keep up with all the states, all the all the uh, pronouns. So I apologize in advance. So don't come for me. Uh, part of the thing is I don't have children. But I know some of y'all may have daughters and stuff. I know Debbie got daughters. I don't know about the other two. This mm-hmm. affects scholarships also. What if you got this transgender athlete beating y'all, your daughters, and it affects them getting scholarships? They'll be like, well, you haven't won a race in so long. Why should we give you a scholarship? And think that's something that crossed my mind there. Maybe they should just have their own separate category once more of those kids decide to live that way. And so it won't mess up scholarships potentially. I would be totally so cool can. with that, Tobias, if the it if it's were running against other it's. That would be perfect. Yo. And it wouldn't even matter where the thoughts and from or how to be Austin or the thoughts and comments of B. Austin and not War Room Sports as a whole. <laughs> <laughs> They can no, get but, together and do that. So y'all are saying they need to have men, scholarships for the men's team, scholarship for the women's team, and scholarship for the transgender team. That's what y'all are saying? They're easy for the NBA team. So you would need a lot of people to be comfortable and come out of the closet or do what they got to do before that would even be possible. Because as of now, a lot of them it's, so, it's so few. That's why the stories right. are so big because it only happens once, you know, in every sport, like every year. So we'll see. We'll see. Hey, you so guys have a good sure. day, though. All right. Yeah, thanks for your call as usual. We'll wrap to you next week. <laughs> but I'm, I'm, oh, that's wrong. I'm pretty sure that the uh, transgender community um, is not in agreement with you, fellas. <laughs> And I'm pretty sure they will be coming for you on all forms of social media in the next few days. Yeah, I didn't say that. No, about that. Any, <laughs> any, of them, any of them that comes to the War Room Sports social media will be forwarded to uh, Tobias and B. Austin. <laughs> they will be forwarded. All right, Jim, what happened, man, while we were on the grind, man? Oh, wow, they were oh yeah, damn, my bad. Uh, Tobias went in. But anyway, what happened while you were on the grind? Um Let's talk about uh, Jackson State football signing. Uh, this young man was uh, shot to death in a, you know, some some gun violence which plagues our country. Um, Dev, you got the statistics uh, about the young man? Yeah, I got the story. Seventeen-year-old recent graduate of DeSoto High School in Texas. Y'all yeah, should know that name. It's pretty big in high school football. Um, oh, he was shot on Monday. The story was um, his name is Leroy Hawkins. He was signed to play, as Jimmy said, at Jackson State University. He was in the front seat of a car with 
a friend and witnesses say a third person came up to the car. The three people argued. The person outside the car started letting loose inside of the car. He uh, hit Leroy Hawkins, who didn't die on the spot. He died in the hospital Tuesday. It was a, it was late Monday night when it happened. The other person was able to get out of the car and escape. So, of course, the, the person who was trying to do something with, with his future, not saying that the other one wasn't, um, ends up being the one getting snuffed out. They found him sitting in the car, basically, you know, with several gunshot wounds. He had a, a post a few days prior, I think it was on IG, where he was kneeling with his high school diploma, with his cap and gown on, paraphrasing again. He was saying something like, you know, there's a lot of people out there who thought I wouldn't make it to this point. Um, you know, he basically was bigging himself up and, and basically giving some some smoke to the haters and non-believers. And then a few days later, this dude is found dead in the in the front seat of a car. It's crazy, man. Mm. Yeah, day. man. Rest in power to the young man. That's just oh, kind of right there, Dougie. Tired, man. Right there. I mean, tired. Yeah. Yeah, pretty much. I don't even to say to that. Um, it's one of them things, Jim, make you want to air box like Trey. Boys in the hood. Yeah, dog. I, I, I'm just going to move on to the next story, which is about a Toronto Raptors fan this who went better. on live TV and said that he wanted to he wanted to take Aisha Curry and and um f her right yeah. in the pee. He wanted to make sweet, passionate love to her. <laughs> yeah, he said yeah, this on, was... he went on live TV said I want to f her in the pee. The funniest thing about this to me though was the reaction of all the other fans around him. They were like. Come on, man! Oh my God! Like yo, Toronto is like they yeah, like the nice people. Yeah, we trying like, to be we trying to be rowdy. Nice guy, we trying to say mean things, but you you tripping? You took it to a whole nother level because this was um you know those loonies who be out in what they call Jurassic Park that 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 area outside of the arena, and yeah, I called y'all loonies because for people to pack up, put some clothes on, go down to the arena to watch the game outside the arena, I think you're loony. Um, <laughs> you're like, you ain't got no ticket, man. Stay your ass at home. So you stand up for hours at a time, and a lot of them just to get onto the to the premises, because it must be like you know, the fire marshal must shut it down after a while. Like a lot of these people are lined up. Like the first game of the NBA Finals, they were lined up 15 hours before game time to stand up. Not lining up to go into the arena, but lining up to stand outside. Um, I don't know what the weather is like in June, but we've all been to Toronto. Not the warmest place on earth. Um, yeah, so he, he claims that he was drunk. Um, the question had nothing to do with that. The reporter that was interviewing <laughs> the I mean, asked this dude who's 28 years old. His name is Tristan Work- Workington. We are not letting you off the hook by not giving your name. They said when it, they asked him what was it like to be at the stadium for the game, and he responded, "The vibe was unreal, and I just want to I just want to let everybody know, Aisha Curry, we're gonna f you right in the pee." <laughs> that had to do with being asked about being at the stadium. So he said, <laughs> "Yo, um, he doesn't even remember being there." He said, "What I did was re- disgraceful." It was an alcohol situation. To be honest, I don't even remember being there, but I'm responsible for my own actions at the end of the day, and I am not sitting here claiming victory. I said victory. Well, I mean, I mean victim. victim. I'm sorry. And he, she, uh, wanted, she wanted apologize. attention, right? Aisha Curry. No. She attention, right? She would she? No, we're about to get in trouble, but. Hey, this is the kind of. No, nah, we're not about to get in trouble. Listen. I, I, Jimmy, I can't speak for your alcohol tolerance and intake. Uh, <laughs> our brother here, Devin, uh, I know that Mac has, has never been a drinker. He's never been a drunkard. I have been inebriated at least 100 times, and I can tell you. <laughs> Damn. I personally remember every single thing that I've ever done under the influence. I have never forgotten about so I believe, I've always been of the opinion that when people say that, they're copping out. Now, you could argue, well, alcohol has a different effect on different people, and you may well be right. But I've I've downed a fifth of gin. 
I have been under the influence of the 151. I have had all of the hen dogs. And I can remember every single moment, good and bad, stomach lining being earled up and all. So I can't give my man a pass on the whole, I don't remember anything that I did. I apologize. It was just, a, man, you remember. You know what you were doing. You were just drunk. <laughs> Alcohol. Yeah, like Bielsa said, he's been drunk over 100 times and remembers it all. Like, I've been drunk. <laughs> Yo, why you giving number, five though? Times. I've probably been drunk four or five times in my whole life, and I can basically tell you details of each and every one of those times as well. So I mean, but, I mean, you know, it's, it's two to play people. devil's advocate here. <laughs> To play devil's advocate here, I have seen people get, like, blackout drunk and, and do and say things, and it's like, yo, because, and, and, you know, people you do see, drink and act I see those people, them, I just see them lay down and just be out. <laughs> they just, like, yeah. They're not part of the yeah, party. that's a like, blackout. I know, some people, I, know, black. I know some people get drunk and they have the raps. Some people get drunk and they think they're tough and they just want to fight everybody. Some people get drunk and act clownish. So, and, 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 and as I said that, I'm pretty sure both of you guys. And just turned into porn stars. <laughs> yeah, and he was, being, he was on his clown, John. I'm going to F you right in the A. But with all that being said, I mean, she wanted attention. So, I mean, you know, not, not that she wanted that kind of attention, but. And shout out to the old head with the. Uh, he just had it nicer. Uh, actually created that whole meme. <laughs> if he said it nicer, he might have had a chance. Played yourself. Yo, that was not the thought to me, by the way. <laughs> Congratulations. Um, you played yourself. Yeah. Yo. Next um, story. Hold on. Skyview wants you to cook something up for tomorrow. He wants you to cook up a versus um, Derek Brooks versus uh, Ray Lewis. But, for y'all say, because we know what the answers would be. He wants you to do the college version. So FSU Derek Brooks versus, excuse me, Miami uh, Ray Lewis. That would be a little bit closer for the people yeah, who call but, and play college. But if you put that on our page, no. I think the average age is probably like 22. So all they're going to do is go with the Ray that they know, which is the NFL Ray, even if we tell them not to. And they're going to say, is this really no, a Even person? a 50-year-old, because it- – because you can't separate that out of your head. Like it's just almost impossible for most sports fans to think about it. Like in, in like that, they're going to say Ray Lewis because they're going to combine the, the, the professional and in the well, pros. We'll in the pros, it's not even close. You know, like the ones we get from other people, we'll credit it to to Kev. <laughs> they can tell yeah, you. Yeah, I cooked that up for you. <laughs> hey, Kev, uh, Kev, why 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 are you why are you listening, Kev? Though, see if you can think of a couple other things. Um, because that's kind of trash. But anyway, um. <laughs> but, you. but we appreciate it. <laughs> no, no, it, it's not. It's not trash from the standpoint of uh, it's not close. So I think that's a good one, but it's just that I know how people are. No one's going to be able to separate yeah, the pros. Out. He's, he's giving social media audiences too much credit. I mean, you can look on any post yeah. and see that most people don't even understand half the questions we ask. That's why the stuff that Court posts. Shout out to the homie Court. Gets the most run because people it like so well kind of simple stuff. They like that stuff. Like I, I don't understand also, how people can talk about the same topics over and over and over again. But my man posts them, and he gets a lot of play. He gets a lot of run on them while I'm sitting there yo, holding also, my court. Last okay. night, you want to Last night, y'all was <laughs> cooking the WNBA on both IG and Facebook, and of course, uh, right, and, and just like that. You know, question, it, 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 Okay, go ahead. You're probably about to say the same thing. In traditional B. Austin fashion, he has to come on and take things a bit a bit too far. Um, I didn't even see that. I don't know if you, I didn't even, Yeah, B. Austin went on IG and um, uh, B. Austin, I don't know if you want me to repeat what you said or, or you don't mind I if I repeat it. what you said. <laughs> I'm gonna read it. You have full well, permission going, to quote me. It's on IG. Um, and B. Austin, you can't, you can't pull the fact that you were drunk and don't remember either. By the way. I blame it on me. I can't do that. Yo, but I thought you so, were going to go here, Jim, because, you know, since we were on that topic, even when we posted that, the question about the WNBA, there was still a large contingent of people who didn't realize that it was a sarcastic question and were on there. Is this a real question? Like, oh, God, some of y'all just don't. <laughs> like, <laughs> All right, so we got. We got at at thought to epiphany says 
I deserve this money now and backdate my checks because I've never watched Brett Griner and Friends to begin with. <laughs> so, <laughs> all right, for those listening, because they're probably lost right now, let me tell you what the question actually said. It was a photo of a of a mansion, a very nice mansion with a you know, with everything, pool, all kinds of stuff. Um, and I'm stalling because I'm trying to get to the question. Jimmy, you got it up, don't you? Um, you just read his. I tell you exactly what it says. So this yeah, is a beautiful pool. mansion, um, with the running water. The, the uh, as they say, it had everything. It was it was to the nines, whatever that means. Um, yeah. it, it says this mansion is yours. Twenty million house. This mansion is yours with 50 acres of land, five cars of your choice, and a $10 million monthly paycheck. But you can never watch a WNBA game again. What you going to do? And, uh, <laughs> you know. So, so it was sarcastic. The door, was a joke. If you don't know that that's a sarcastic question, then we have nothing to talk about further. Because there were some people really mad, like, thinking we were dumb for posting it. I'm like, ah, like <laughs> come on. But, but a lot of people got it though, but the junk got a couple hundred shares. People were sharing. Yeah, yeah, a lot, a lot of people, people did get it. it. But like I said, you, you know, you always got the. But it's always it's always going to be those few that's like, really? Mm-hmm. And then you get the social mad. justice warriors. What are you trying to say about the ladies' game? Like, I ain't got to say nothing. Read the comments. I'm trying to say Brett Griner and Dominic Tarasi is trash. <laughs> Yo, see, in typical B Austin fashion. Yo, no. be honest, you got to go read the comments on the Facebook page. Those, uh, those cats was going in. Yeah, like, they was being mad disrespectful, too. You said Dan Dan Tarasi? What? He <laughs> called him Dominic Tarasi. <laughs> David Tarasi. <laughs> Yo. Yo. Funny thing. Anyway, man, let me pull to the first. Yeah, we got to get to the topic. When it first debuted back in, like, 96, I go, right? I watched, like, the first two seasons. And the thing is, if you're Why? raising kids... If you're reading, because first of all, you know, I'm me, it, and it had women, but then you realize that most of them women wasn't really Did into me. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> then you realize that most of the women weren't Did really it? into me, so then you, you know, start switching the channel because nobody was really attractive in the first place. But she, I even went to a couple of games. I went to a game in Houston. I was just on my all sport at all time mode back then. But I swear. Probably for the last 15 years, I don't know when it starts. I don't know when it ends. Um, I've looked up a couple of times to see who won, just so we can mention it on here, mention the champions. But I have no clue what's going on in that league. I don't have a clue how that league is still, you know, pressing on. But shout out to them. Keep doing your thing. And what I was about to say, if you had a kid growing up playing basketball, the crazy thing about it is that's what you should be showing them because it's fundamentals at its best, because there's no excitement, no flat, and not a lot of flash, there's some flash. But I just None. I can't. I can't do it. Yo, I, I can't do it. I, um, <laughs> you know, I'm, I I'm may as bad as sure that they get, but can't do it. Won't do it. I, can't may, coach with I, may, I may or may not have pooped once or twice with a uh, one Shamika Holtzclaw, and she may or may not have been, uh, on her by try actual with uh, both men and women at the time. And we used to clown and she would laugh at our jokes. I would say, you know, when a WNBA game is getting underway, how much titty tape is, is there and how many titties is there? <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Hey, man. Go to the next topic for this dude. Get it yeah, so I was saying, um, Meldrick Taylor, right? Um, oh, 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 man, Mel. Meldrick, Meldrick Taylor was arrested in Philadelphia on Lehigh Avenue. He was trying to evict one of his tenants. And um, he didn't feel as though he had to uh, follow the proper procedure. So he told the boy to get out and pull the revolver out. And he called that filing an eviction notice. <laughs> he called filing an eviction then. notice, pulling out, the, pulling out the gat and telling the boy, you got to roll. Now, now Jim, oh, and me, me for that matter, because y'all... Yeah. Y'all, much on a higher level than me, and, you know, in the real estate investment game, with the, the tenant game, especially Jimmy. You know, Jimmy out there, like, you know, DJ Envy. He got all um, kinds of tenants. I'm things. poor. But anyway, I do have a – I do have a – Anyway, I know you can relate. 
I know you can relate though, because yeah, I definitely can. Evicting a tenant might be one of the hardest things to do on this earth. When you when you yeah, really think about don't, it, sometimes you got don't, go don't let it be a single mom. Don't yeah, let it be you a single go mom. Winter time. Play in the game. So I can't say I, I don't really, understand. I, but Melzer, come on, dog. You got to do that. When it comes to the real estate game, I've made every mistake there is to make. But I, I'm at a Shut good point now because I, I, I super. I super see my tenants, so I don't have that problem. But uh, I, I definitely have to the point like the last couple times. I just paid them to leave. Like y'all get a couple of dollars if you just get out. You know what I'm saying? But here's what's crazy about Melvin. Jimmy was trying to hold the hammer. Yeah. <laughs> Yo, <laughs> I actually met Meldrick um, less than a year. A property in Germantown that I was trying um, wholesale, trying to acquire, and and he was there. Um, telling me, you know, he's a real estate investor as well, right? But he was very punch drunk. And to be honest with you, I oh, didn't wait. even know it was Meldrick Taylor. Yeah. And we were just Game happened to be great. talking about real estate and he hit me with the boy hit me with the, you don't even know who I am, do you? So Man, he's still I'm like, no. He should have been like, yeah, he, 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 <laughs> no, not at all. No, so here's the thing though. So it was me and my going over this property. So the, at the time, he's telling me how you know that's what he do now. He a real estate investor, and I'm not gonna lie, because of the way he was talking and the way he like you know was carrying himself, we both laughed like, yeah, whatever. He probably. And then our story, I was like, well, damn, he wasn't lying to me. He got some property because mm-hmm. uh, uh, you know, although he's handling his evictions a little bit bad, he wasn't I'm lying though. Say, you, he out there thugging it, yo. And of course, we couldn't mention Mel Taylor without mentioning one of the like we talked about uh, upsets earlier. He was in one of the more controversial fights in boxing history um, when he was clearly dominating an undefeated legend in Julio Cesar Chavez. And in the 12th round, Chavez started giving him the business and Mitch, not, not Mills Lane, what's the black dude name that everybody hate? This is when I first started hating dude. I can't remember his name right now. Um, yeah, Corny Bull. Ref ball, you know, y'all know who it was. Anyway, he stopped the fight within the, you know, under ten seconds left in the fight. Stopped it because Chavez was was beating Meldrick down, even though he was clearly way ahead on the scorecards. Could have pulled the mm-hmm. greatest victories in his and anybody else's career because at that time Chavez was like eighty something and zero. Um, Yo, he was like ninety nine and zero. <laughs> Exactly. Stopped the fight with a couple of seconds left. Um, and one of the worst, that was one of the worst things I've ever seen a referee do in my life, man. So, I will never, ever Chavez forget. Was like, Chavez is like oh, a, 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 a bi-weekly payment. My man used to fight every two weeks. Mm-hmm. He, he wanted to get paid like bi-weekly. He just went and got a job because his goal was to get paid bi-weekly. So he's like, I'm just going to fight every two weeks. But um, and looking back, Jim, it was actually worse? with two seconds left on the clock. Two seconds. Yo! Two Do you think that's worse than uh, Sweet Pea? When Sweet Pea uh, got hit, got cheated? Yeah. I mean, once Chavez became what he was with the undefeated record, you know, you, you had to do a lot to beat him. They weren't going to let you just walk off with his belts. So, yeah, Sweet Pea got robbed. <laughs> they protected got you. Too. It's crazy. I, and I'm not knocking him. Right? Boy could fight. Chavez can fight. Uh, I'm not knocking him, but like I said, the crazy once part he got about that, they weren't letting you walk off with his stuff. <laughs> Mel should have held the gap to his head as and walked much, off with it the other day. As much success as Chavez has had, and for the records that Chavez uh, holds, his name is never mentioned when I talk to boxing fans about an all-time great. Like, it comes up, there's a story surrounding him, but his name is never mentioned when they talk about the all-time greats, and I, you know, and I don't know if that's because he fought so much, but he saturated like, the market. You know, <laughs> I, yeah, yeah, yes, I don't know what it is, but he's not even. Yeah, you know, that, that's maybe crazy. I gotta figure out a way to. Uh, maybe maybe that's the facts of cap, like Chavez, the top yeah. ten of all time, facts of cap. Got a hundred, hundred and seven wins and six losses. <laughs> How you how you got one hundred seven? Yo, forget the six losses. Once you get it, once you get past one hundred wins, it don't matter how many losses you got. Now, how you get one hundred and seven wins? How you square yeah, with one hundred and seven individuals? 
Yo, and didn't take dog. Didn't take his first loss until fight number ninety one to Frank Randall. Yo. Dog, I'm uh, we, I'm sure all of us have been in the final four in our life. You can buy a lot of fights that us three right here have had. I don't think we had one hundred and seven rumbles. Hell no, no, no. <laughs> a no. lot of fights, cuz. Hell no. <laughs> A lot I, of had goon. I didn't have to fight that much. <laughs> exactly. Like that's a lot of fight. You know, that's a lot of time to square it with another man. That's not. That's a lot of time to stay in front of a man that's I'm trying to knock your block. But that's, but that's, just, that's just professional. Imagine what he did on the amateur circuit. He probably had I don't another one though. Because I, I keep saying 107, but he lost six times. I mean, he squared up 113 times with another man on the other side no, trying to knock his head 115, off. 115, because he had a couple of draws. <laughs> yeah, wow. Yo, wow. how do you how do Yo, you how do you stand in front of somebody 115 times with them trying to hurt you? Basically, as an upstanding Mexican fighter of the highest order and regard, you brought up his amateur career. I, I ain't even being funny. Bull was probably fighting two a day in the amateur. <laughs> Yo, he might have been fighting two a days as a professional when he first started. How do you fight? Dog. Dog. That that right Yo. there is called putting your playing your dues. Like you stood in front of 115 grown men trying to knock your head off. And there was no way the had. first one he stood next to as a professional. Bull was 17 years old. Ain't no way he Yo. doesn't tell the truth. He has to tell the truth. No, he, he has to. Dog. There are, there are cats to. who have 10-year NFL careers who don't have 115 games. I'm sitting here. Really? I'm, trying to do, and, I'm trying to do some math on him. Because he was born in 62. He made his professional debut at the age of 17. So what's that? Uh, seventy-two would be ten, and 70, seven more so would be seventy-nine. Uh, seventy-nine. Listen to this. In his twelfth fight on March fourth, nineteen eighty, dude. <laughs> Yo, he debuted up. in seventy-nine. He fought his twelfth fight by March of the next year. <laughs> no, what a month, man. So he probably was like line it up. Come on, line man. it up. Line it up. <laughs> Let's go. Like, line it up. Went to a club in Tijuana and had four dudes lined up to fight. <laughs> Yo, my man, I'm a my man. Because yeah, you man know Tijuana will give you Yo. a license when nobody else will. Y'all know that. Yo, by the <laughs> way, man, shout out to Meldrick Taylor, who we supposed to be talking about. But anyway, I know. Um, he no, got no. no. We played again by Chavez. We supposed to be, you know what I mean, giving Meldrick his flower and still talking about Chavez. But, uh, holding the hammers for shout out to Melder Taylor for, for the Goon Evictions. <laughs> Goon Evictions LLC. Hit up Meldrick. But, yo, um, Kawhi Leonard, who's probably having, like, the best year of any athlete ever so far. I mean, two wins away from an NBA championship. Uh, so, despite Second. what could happen, even if they lose his finals, he's going to go at least six games. And he's pretty much proven himself to be one of the upper echo players because a lot of people forgot with him sitting out just how talented this guy is. And he's now made himself a household name and uh, made New Balance a bunch of money, I assume. Um, I'm about to cop some of, orthopedic shoes. He's now <laughs> filed a lawsuit. He's now filed a lawsuit against Nike for his claw logo. He supposedly drew that logo himself. Nike's saying that they own a logo because it was done when he was under contract with them. He's like, FOH, I brought that to the table. So Yeah, they said he started drawing that <laughs> college and then you know got with some professionals and tweaked it and all that kind of stuff like Jimmy said brought it to the table with Nike but while he was with Nike they went kind of behind his back and went and and, uh, trademarked it (laughs) so they legally own it now Um, here it says unbeknownst to Leonard and without his consent they filed an application for copyright registration of the logo and falsely represented in the application that they authored the logo. So I'm thinking he might mm. win this shit if he, you know, can ultimately yeah. prove like that he ended up drawing it. But it sounds like if Nike wanted to, you know, with their big, expensive, fancy lawyers, 
They can come up here and make him look like a liar. But I'm sitting here thinking on some level, just do the right thing and don't fight this. Maybe maybe Michael Jordan can step in because he was a Jordan brand athlete. Maybe he has some say and just tells Nike, give the man his logo, let him, you know, make money off his own. Nike is being pecked because even if you don't do the right thing and just let him move on with his thing, what are you going to do with it other than just block him from using it? <laughs> You're going to wait for the next big, <laughs> next dude to come with big hands with the initials KL? Yeah, like... Y'all going to force him to wear the number so, two so he can brody this man's logo? <laughs> so basically, you're just going to block... You're just trying to block his blessings. You don't care that you yourself to make any bread. You just want to block him. Right. And I guess you figure right. that's part of the game, yo. The, you know, in my Omar voice, See, think, and why it's part of the game, thinking, yo. Think about their thinking, Jim. They done went out and bought this man's logo. They done copyrighted this man's logo just in case something like this would happen. And now look at them. They got yo, the man. And, okay. and when I hear this story, I just want to send a shout-out to Johnny Gill for um, purchasing a new edition, although you came to the group late. You own that name. Now you got the tour. Got the tour the, got the tour the room 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 there he is. Yo, <laughs> come on, Johnny. Come on, Johnny. I know you're the only boy that can sing, but you can't do that to the to the any bunch. Man. Johnny, like, oh, y'all want to handle y'all business? Watch this. <laughs> Yo. He's like, I bet y'all going to tour yeah, another Johnny day. The... <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Only show on the internet where you talk about Kawhi Leonard that ends up in the Johnny Gill conversation. You know what I'm saying? So that's a waste to everybody else. Anyway, man, before, before we move forward, Dev, give some quick birthday shout outs. All right, we give some bit, some birthday shout outs and then we're gonna go to the uh phone lines because we see we got the the homie waiting on the line and the birthdays are brought to you by nobody. Whoever birthed you is whoever's your birthday sponsor. Uh a couple of quick shout outs. Having a birthday today. Olindo Mare. We usually don't give the kicker, kicker. Shout, shout outs. But you know, it's it's a slow news day, slow birthday day. But shout out to Alindo Mare who turns 46 years old. He was a really good kicker for a minute. It just didn't, you know, it didn't last. Yeah, he was. Like the uh, I remember him having like a really strong leg, like really impressive leg at the time. Um, Bill Bates, like we, oh. yo, this is like we, we, all the bums getting a shout out. Bill Bates was like one of the <laughs> best special teams dudes for the Cowboys. He was one of the best uh, bums. He was yo, one of the best bums. He was he was a wedge buster. I didn't back realize when be legal to hold hands with other dudes and run down the field and yeah. throw your body in there. That was stupid. I just realized we were giving Bill Bates a shout out. I looked at our rundown and I thought it said Bill Gates. <laughs> <laughs> Bill Bates. Oh, Bill Bates was a professional was a professional crash dummy. <laughs> exactly. And the, <laughs> and, and the best athlete of this three man bunch. Uh, Bjorn Borg, the tennis legend, turned 63 years old. So uh, we like to give a Yo. warm salute to all of these folks on there. Shout out to Bill day. Gates anyway. Bro. Shout out <laughs> to Bill Gates because I thought it was Bill the whole Gates. time. So shout out to you, He's Bill a Gates. better person than all of these other people. And, and shout out for no reason to um to my man. Uh, Yo, I'm tripping. Steve Jobs. Because you know, we've come up with some things that, you, that I know. Yo, that's what I was joking. I know you kicking the roof of your casket looking at what these dudes are doing with your company. Um, so shout out Yo, to that's him. what I was joking with. I thought would really be exaggerating, man, because he'd be kicking all our Apple be Google clowning. friends in the head. But he sent me some stuff. Yo. And, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm just an average tech user. Like, a lot of stuff that I have on my phone, I just take it for granted and think all phones do this. And Jimmy showed me some of the stuff that Apple was out here on stage announcing like it was the next greatest thing that, that I've literally been doing on all of my phones for the past 10 years. And B, one of them literally is 10 years old. Like they announced this week that they're going to have swipe technology on their phones. Yo. Yo. What? But, Yo, but I was swiping on like my I was and Phil with an Phil was an like Apple guy. <laughs> Yo, Phil is an Apple guy. I personally, the funny thing is, I actually have. A, I, I mean, I got two phones. You know what I mean? One for the one for the tenants, and you know what I'm saying, one for that work. But anyway, that's a I joke, you guys. Don't, 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 don't joke, you guys. Yeah, that's a, that's a that's a uh, Kevin Gates, not to be confused with uh, 
Bill Gates. But anyway, um, <laughs> so I use both. Use both platforms, but I'm always joking with our brother Phil Matic. And Phil Matic is like Apple to the death. Like, so I'm always joking about how they um, announce old technology. So I sent Dev the article. This week. He was like, no, "Yo, was swipe." Cool. Yo, they had no cool. swipe. Yo, I was using swipe in '09. Like, Yo, seriously. They announced a feature where you can, when you text, and you can like move and drag the cursor to anywhere you want it. I was like, "My phones don't do that." Like, Yo, they talk about how now, now on the iPad you can plug an external hard drive. I'm like, yeah, I've been doing like literally for about eight years now. But it's just funny to me though. I, I don't do it as slander. Look, use whatever you like, use whatever you like. But it's still. Come on, that's deep. I've been, but no, I've been but doing like, that since I, I was in my point. No, no, I'm a marketing dude. So there's some mark, <clears throat> there's some marketing genius in what they do at Apple because they have a lot Absolutely. of people brainwashed into thinking. That the technology is something crazy, and I don't even get into the, the you know the, the Android Apple Wars or the Samsung you know uh, Apple Wars. Yeah. But then when you look at it and you see people talking about it and you actually see the facts that they're bringing up, I'm like, yo, like these people are real cocky about the device and about the company that they're using, and all that this company is doing is actually taking stuff that the first company did. Like five years ago, and then <laughs> rolling it out much better. Yo. Like getting on stage and announcing it and getting everybody hype. And I'm like, yo, Apple's a hell of a company when it comes to marketing. But like Jimmy All was I'm mentioning, is- like Steve Jobs was an innovator. At this point, they're no longer innovating. They're just waiting five years after you know one company does. Because so, if you want to keep it. If we really keeping it a buck, the first Samsungs were rips of the iPhone. Like the iPhone is the one that changed the game. Because before iPhone, it was BlackBerry and, and Windows Phone, and then iPhone came out and changed the game. And Samsung basically bit off them, but they bit off them and just the innovation going where once uh once my once my man is going. But I, to me, like again, I don't care what anybody uses. I just find it hilarious. I find it funny because I think it's dope Damn. you can announce something that's ten years old and people get hyped about iPhone. it. Actually buys material from Samsung to make their phones. So, like yeah. for anybody out there bragging about who sells more and this and that, like, yo, they get paid for every phone that they sell. So, like, yeah, the plus I, plus technology I with that was so y'all got, y'all rare, stop. you had to actually buy it from your competitor. That's weird. <laughs> y'all gotta stop getting excited over like, unless you actually own equity to company. Y'all gotta stop like. Fighting for these companies like they're yours, um, right? And getting the and that's get the over thing. other like, people's money and all that. Before, Shout out to Jay Z. Before my two galaxies, my my last five phones before that were like HTCs, and it wasn't like like I'm not loyal to any brand. It's just that once you have something, they make it easier for you to upgrade to their next model rather than switch to another phone. So I, I you know, I really had yeah. to make a decision to switch. To Samsung. Now I'm kind of caught up in their matrix, but now that I that, you know, now that I have difficult one, now that it was back more then. attention to the to the you know the whole Samsung versus Apple. But when you used to say that stuff, and I was still using HTCs, like my phones did a lot of stuff that you were saying, and theirs wasn't. He was like yeah. a child in all this. It wasn't even nobody yeah, checking for them at all. Yeah, their marketing was stupid. ACC ran themselves in a hole. I, I don't think they gave you an option. They stopped making them joints, didn't they? I, I don't even know. I forget. I don't know. Yeah, I, I think they, I think they going. I think they out of here. Left them behind. But y'all, I was out. Like I said, <laughs> y'all can use whatever y'all want to use, man. Like, whatever makes you happy, man. But I just think it's dope. And also, like Dev said, from a marketing standpoint, I think it's dope the fact that when you have uh, what they call raving fans that like will rumble for you. The same way Nike does. There's a lot of brands like that. It's not just Apple. Nike has it too. Cats will rumble you for Nike. I think that's crazy. Shout but shout y'all got to find count on people's money, man. <laughs> shout out to Phil Maddock again. Oh yeah, yeah. Phil, Phil, uh, Phil, Phil is completely brandwashed. But shout, that's my brother though, man. Yo, shout out to um, <laughs> Jay Z fans too, because y'all was raving this past week. Um, and by the way, there's an article today, right, in the Washington Post, and this is like going really on the side. There's an article about Barack Hussein Obama. Um, I'm going to share with y'all once we finish the show. But they're saying now that Barack Obama is going to be the first ex-president to become a billionaire. Yeah. And as I'm reading the article, and they're talking about like, because of the stuff that he's 
gotten the opportunity to do in book deals he's signing now. He's on his way to becoming a billionaire. And when that happens, I can only imagine the call off that's going to happen. Uh, oh Lord! You know, on the internet. Was cool. You now think you're rich? <laughs> yeah, you that's think Jay Z got it? Well, when y'all president the B Mark? Oh my God! It's going to be a national holiday. Shout out to that. Shout out to the brother though. You know what I'm saying? I'm yeah. playing with him because he likes it too. Day. <laughs> still kill babies. Uh, he still kill babies, but he got a little jump shot, so he cool. Skyview says, speaking of phones, I'm in finance. One of my clients tried to tell me about Palm in 2000 as an investment. I wonder what it would have been worth now. Remember, I killed Doc Bates <laughs> to swear about Palm. He had me uh-huh. getting a couple. Palm. Doc Bay used to say Palm was going to be it. Hey, or what? Is it? Yo, I, uh. Hey, Kev, look in the palm of your hand, and you see what you got right now? That's what it's worth. And Neil in the chat room, she said she actually chose iPhone because it didn't have all the fancy stuff. Because I always see that, too. People are like, that's why, like, old people like iPhones because it's not difficult. And I don't think the name is difficult. There's just a lot of features that you, you know, a lot of tech that, because I always tell you, I probably use 49% of what my phones can yeah. do. But that's the thing, though. I don't have it. Like, again, I tell people all the time. I use both. I have a 10. And like the iPhone 10, it does work. It does, what, it does, what it does do, it does very well. So there's nothing yeah. against it because it does what it does very well. It, it, you know, and, and like she said, a lot of people like that because it doesn't have all the high tech. But let I me, mean, no, low-key, I'm very, so I try to like, I push everything about. to the max. <laughs> I didn't call you old. I was talking about the old people who got iPhones. It's a big population. No, we're not calling people. you old. <laughs> but that, but that. that but but amongst amongst the amongst the quote unquote tech community, that is like a joke that old people like iPhones because it's less powerful and it's easier to understand. You know what I'm saying? Like my in law you know has I, newer galaxies than me and they don't have like a clue of what they're doing. Yo, father in law is the man though. Like yo, their father in law like he, he tried to stay on the space hip, like yo. He tried to tell you everything, yo. I, 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 I bangs with old head, like he bend people trash can out. Like, he stay <laughs> trying, like. <laughs> it's like my my father, like whatever he sees at our house, just know he gonna get it. Like it's difficult to buy him a gift because we'll get some technology and be like, oh, this would be a cool Christmas gift, cool birthday gift for him. But the day after he leaves our house, he's gonna go get it for himself. So he always messes up. Stuff that we like, yeah. He got, he got. I hope like, I'm, a, I'm hope I'm a hip home in retirement. on every floor of his house. <laughs> <laughs> but I Yo, come down there like three no times a year, for. and he got to wait for me to come down there to fix it. <laughs> Yo, the OG don't play no games because I, I mess with old head. But yo, um, hey, with all that being said, because. I have no idea how we got. Oh yeah, you gave Steve Jobs a shout out. That's how we did because we gave Bill Gates. A, see, this is the only where a oh. conversation about Bill Bates goes into an iPhone conversation. <laughs> Yo, I was about to say, how the hell did we get on this? I'm about, yeah. Yo, All Bill right, Bates. So we get into the NBA rap, and we promise, Nas, we 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 about to get the phone. We about to get on the phone lines right now. Um, you guys can check out our website at warroomsports.com if you want to call in and speak with us about. NBA finals or anything going on in the NBA, um, you can dial a digital extreme tech hotline 323-410-0012. Press one when prompted, but if you're already listening from your phone, just press one if you want to talk. Jimmy pay this quick bill, and then we're going to get the homie Naj on the line before we talk. To yes, you. sir. And this NBA rap is brought to you by Digital Technologies. Salute to the brothers and sisters at Digital Extreme Technologies. Um, they uh, helped us with some issues this past week. Um, very customer service centric. So salute them. If you need a custom website, if you need an app built for your business, contact Digital Extreme Technologies. You can do that by going to digitalextremetech.com or calling them at 267-205-4203. Tell them you heard about them here, and you'll get the special war room discount. We're going to get Naj in the phone. Real quick, i got to ask you guys a question because I'm going to see what Naj thinks about this too. Do you guys um like this format of so many days off? Um, at the I feel like no. everything slowed down now that the final started. Like, no, but they definitely given the chance for KD and all them dudes to get healthy. 
Like, it, it's it's crazy because they stretch out the first round just, and then they stretch out yeah. the final. Um, and Skyview said, yeah, like, I, yeah, Skyview, you know, if you want, I could get Jimmy to give you a list of technology that you will be seeing in the next three or four years. Um, so shout I out to y'all. I ain't seen nobody, man. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Jimmy is team whoever got the best tech. Yeah, whoever and got that hot stuff. I'm, I'm on team hot. Jimmy ain't, Jimmy, Jimmy ain't loyal. He ain't loyal to these brands. You know why? He Not at all. Greatest. Because Jimmy's always telling me about the next greatest thing. It takes me a You know, he'll tell me. You get on it. I'll smash it. Go. For a yo, couple of that's weeks. like, and yo. Ask, what was that thing you were telling me about? And then he'll finally... Tell me about it. Tell me how to load it, or tell me however to get it. And then, the, like <laughs> three days later, I'm asking him how to use something on it, and he on to the next thing. Oh, I don't use that no more. <laughs> yo, but hey, yo, and shout, to, uh, shout to my shout to my brother Doc Bay because that's one of the ways me and Doc Bay bonded. Pause because we yeah. both love the tech. Like that's like my one you know, vibe. Like you know, um, outside of pizza. One vice is uh, technology. Like I don't, I don't drink, I don't smoke, I don't, uh, I don't care about clothes and all that nonsense. You always got a vice when it comes to technology. So I ain't team oh, nobody, you... man. I'm team, <laughs> I'm team Dubai porter potty. Like all the, all the like TV joints, all the TV and movie services that that you try oh, to yeah, tell me yeah, about. Yeah, yeah. Guys like, I, I just quit at Showbox. I'm like, I'm still using Showbox. <laughs> I'm gonna say yeah. that out loud. That's gonna come get me, but. I ain't doing nothing else, man. Yeah, it's, it's, we, we, I, I, I ain't engaging in that conversation right there, beloved. <laughs> All right, let's go. You write me Nas, man. What the hell are these dudes talking about? Nas, what's up, man? What up, man? Uh, hey, you on with TikTok? Hey, well, right, well, well I'll, I'll do a little add-on to what y'all said, though. Like, yeah, the iPhone is, is not, like, this impressive thing that people make it out to be. It's just easy to use and, and it's designed. But overall... Right. It's the encryption and the security of you not getting viruses and all that ish. Like that's that's besides that, uh, easily impressed birds. Like the text messages, they like to see a certain color bubble pop up, and that might get you in the door. Like besides that, like yeah, iPhone eight, it ain't really good. You know what I'm saying? That's that's the thing though. Like most of the sensible people that I hear talk about, that's what they talk about. They talk about the security and stuff like that. But I've heard people try to go for chat with Jimmy about the tech, and it's like. A hilarious conversation. <laughs> right, they lie. Yo, they, they lying. Shout, like, to, shout to Phil though. Phil finally just admitted, like, look, it got that Apple logo. Like, I'm like, all right, cool. At least you admit it. At least you admit it. You that, broke him you down. care about that logo. You broke him. Like, we broke him down. That's what's up. But, but yo, man, I, I know y'all want to, you know, clown me for my terrible prediction. I, I'll eat that because uh, it worked it out well for me. Because we've been doing that. Uh, we've been doing that ten years, man. <laughs> So what, I, what I wanted to happen happened anyway, so it's all good, man. Because I hate them and I hope they lose anyway. But uh, plus, dude, there's an excuse. Hey, so hey, when you when you're predicting, how? you can't really account for injury in in any sport. Dude, look, I'm not a good person. That's already established. Uh, but dude, how how is how is Meldrick Taylor on some? Do you know me, type? How is he on some? <laughs> on some I'm about to say, because really, you don't know who I am. You from that what? one moment, and a lot of people don't forgot about you. Bro, yeah, unless you yo, but here's the thing, though. So, he should never. He doesn't look. No, like but here's the cat. thing, though. Right. So he is in Philly, and we were in Philly. We were, we were in Germantown, right off Wayne Ave. Um, but the thing is, like, if you look at the old picture, Elder Taylor, look at him now. He don't even look the same. Like, it's it's because so, because it's funny because he got locked up. They kept showing his old pictures, and I'm like, damn, like, it looked like two <laughs> like, different people. <laughs> right. Right. But well, I mean, he definitely, he definitely hit me with that. Yeah, he he was never even at his height, even at the controversial fight with shout out to Raekwon, Richard Steeles, because you know he was, Ray called him Richard Steeles. That's his name. It, yeah, yeah. <laughs> There's no reason for him to think he was that famous. And can you imagine the phone calls he was doing about that eviction before it really went down? Before he was hot enough to go up there with the pistol. Like, he like yeah, yeah. in the stabber, bruh. Like, come on, you getting threatened by Mel- punch drunk Mel- Duh. That's like those shout out to, uh, messages need to be saved, bro. I need to hear those. Man. Shout out to David. Like, you might have said that. You might have said that to the tennis too. You must don't know who I am. <laughs> yeah, you remember? Remember y'all? Remember uh, David Reed? I remember when we were I young boys David. coming up. Yeah, like, David thing, Reed mm-hmm. in the city. People, they were talking about him being like the next great boxer ever. 
right, even though right. Philly is a big city, dudes do not be as big outside of Philly as we think they are in Philly. I know. Like even know. dudes like like Mike Quick. People in Philly be thinking Mike Quick was one of the greatest receivers of all time. You go know, outside of Philly and people are like, yeah, I remember, dude. Like, you know, you like Mike who? <laughs> yeah, like, you know, Philly people really think Mike Quick is like one of the greats. <laughs> like, dude, Mike Quick dude, that's right. like Atlanta. Yeah, we, we, be in, we, be in, we be in our own bubble. We be in our own bubble. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, it's like a big city in a small town attitude. Down here. Small town chip right. on our you show. cross them state lines, you just another old dude. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But down here, that dude is all good. Where, you know what I'm saying? Like that's that's weird how that yeah. plays out. But but dude, these like okay, when we talk about the bad boy Pistons, we don't say during one of their chips, uh, magic worthy. Like everybody got hurt on the Lakers and they won. All we remember is they won. So I'm about to say, well, yeah, it's way, way we don't because we ain't gonna say none right. of that for any in 20 years. Right. So if this goes the way we think it might go, if the injuries, you know, still hold up, and you know, playing from June to June, we talked about this at the beginning of the season. This is their biggest opponent, staying healthy. Because when you play this many minutes for extended time, year after year, some people are going to go down, and, and that's just, you know, that's just what happened to them. And yeah. like y'all said, hopefully, you know, they don't keep stretching this out and get these dudes time to come back. Because I want to run on the pop them, but I, I thought there was no way it would happen. I thought they was going to get smoked. So I take the L on this. I came on this show and predicted a sweep. So I, I take the L, man. You know what I mean? Any hot fire somebody want to throw at me, I, I, I take the L. <laughs> you know Obviously not going to be a sweep, but it's but it's definitely not over because I don't think they're going out that easy. But we'll see. Yeah, yeah that's the other I'll part. Tell you that. <laughs> right. Even right. hurry the hell up. Okay. Tell you that. I can't. I, honestly, man, I can't live with Aubrey as a champion, as a fan of a champion. <laughs> I can't do it, man. Yo, but, but remember this. That. Remember this, B. You, he can say he's a fan of his champion, but he got dudes from the other team tattooed on his body. So, oh, yo, and you can't. How much oh, credibility? You can't tell him do. that he. You can't tell him that he's not the sixth man, though. Like he really thinks he' about to go out. Like he really thinks he's part of the squad, though. Like he, he thinks if a rumble breaks out, that he's going to get suspended if he leaves the bench. His inauthentic performative blackness at a certain point, man, it just it's just off putting. Like like dude, you you're just not rocking it right. Like no matter what. Remember the dude that had the freshest kicks when they first came out and came to school, but it just it just wasn't right on them. Like that's him in total, man. Mm-hmm. It's still like he's no not matter right. what he's still, he not, he not bending his feet when he too. walked. <laughs> he's not bending his foot when he walked because he don't want to crease him. <laughs> It's just, yeah, it's just right. real cool. <laughs> it is, man. Yeah, it is. but it's I tell you what, though, it's, it's what it's it's funny with Golden State. Though. We talked about this a little earlier. How like when the, before the season started, we had already handed them the championship. It was like even when watching the games and watching last night, like and I'm always waiting for the run. Like, don't matter what the score <laughs> is, they're gonna come back. Don't matter what the score is, they're gonna come back. And then like it just doesn't happen. Like, you know. It's just right, interesting to watch right. that play because we we pretty much handed them the title already. Yeah, yeah. the only thing that can stop them is Quinn Cook and Liv and all them playing extended minutes, which means people are hurt and they in trouble. Like that's the only thing. Besides that, you know, it's a wrap. I wouldn't be surprised if Cousin goes crazy next game. You know what I'm saying? Like that's how. Yeah. Even though I think they're dead, I, I you know what I'm saying? I can't pronounce them boys deaf, man. Because like you said, I kind of thought he come. would. I kind of thought he would yesterday. And I was ready to gloat on some people because, you know, there's a lot of people that's, you know, they keep throwing stuff around like, yeah, y'all said when Cousins came there that it was going to be unfair. I didn't even need them, you know, to win. I don't need Cousins to be the hero. I just thought he would have a good game so you could at least be able to say, like, this is what people talked about. It is unfair when these all-stars can go down and then this dude can come up and score 20 and 10. But And I think, you know, he can't. He can. He just hasn't yet. He had a pretty good game too, yeah. but it's coming. Yeah. 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 I'm not counting them out. Boogie got a 30 point outburst coming. Trust me. Yep. Yeah. I'm not I, counting I them too. Even though over. he's injured. I don't know, but I, I right. never thought he was comfortable enough with this team to have 30 point outbursts. So I don't know. Yeah. We'll see. Who go? Who no, gonna stop me? Who gonna stop me, bro? But you know what I saw last game? He was out there on his MB with the standing at the top of the key, giving dribble handoffs and stuff oh. like that. 
And yeah. and you can say what you want, B. Austin, but Gasol ain't scared. Like you might you might cook Gasol, but he ain't scared. Um, Yo, yeah, as a young like boy, that. as a young boy, we done all cooked the old head that wasn't scared of us, but he still got cooked. <laughs> yeah, but what I'm saying is Gasol out there with his apron on too. Gasol Gasol gave him a little bit of work too, though. So let's not get it twisted. Although I don't know where that came from. Gasol, Gasol goes like one game. Yeah, no, no. What I'm saying is this this playoff run, he's had games where he's looking like, yo, it's over. It's a wrap. He's trash. And then right. the next game, he'll be like, all right, we see why they brought him here. He has some well, terrible uh, games in his playoffs. He's showing, his, he's showing his age. He can't he can't string together a group of games, but he can give you, you know, so, so one maybe, out. maybe the way the finals are set up is helping him too, though, because he's the ball right. in the finals because <laughs> yeah, he gets three nights off in between. <laughs> Right, right, yeah, and, and that Kawhi thing y'all talked about was kind of weird too, because Kawhi he seems like the type of person that counts all of his bread, so I don't know why you know they thought he would be the one like he could pull the okie doke yeah. on or something like that. Yeah. Like he's gonna take this Yo, as far as he can. Nah. They are gonna have to bend. My man, man. Drives, my man drives a twenty year old Tahoe. Yo, you ain't taking no bread from home. <laughs> 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 he's not and about that. Uncle Dennis got yeah. all receipts. They do their own accounting. Like, no, you're not going to take his bread. And then, uh, yo, the Cal Lowry thing with the uh, partial owner of the of Gold State. Like, my yeah, man just tried to mush Cal Lowry. Like, like what the heck? That, that, hey, yo, that's, man. that's investment frustration right there. Cause, right. On, man, you know, was, I heard they, they, they banned him. I don't know. Permanent. He got a year, a year ban and a 500K fine. So, uh, okay. you know, they, they, they Damn. They hit him as hard well, as that. Nothing, like, that. Yeah, nothing to him. Like, take, that out, take that out of my equity. Y'all pay that. <laughs> but my thing is, like, yeah, that had to be some sort of frustration. Let me like, run why, like, I, I was watching that. I was watching it. I'm like, yo, he was two seats over. What was his mm. point? Yeah. <laughs> he That's just crazy. knew these bums ain't supposed to be beating his warriors, who he paid a whole lot of money for. So in his mind, he was just outraged. He was ready, man. But Kyle handled it well, man, because, man, there's a, there's a few guys who that that could have been a whole different turn, Malice at the Palace kind yeah. of stuff, man. But hopefully he I don't wonder, a, I wonder what Kawhi. I wonder what Kawhi would have done. Like, would Kawhi have just stared at him? Like a blank <laughs> Breaking news. <laughs> the Eagles and Carson Wentz have agreed to a, uh, a new four-year contract extension through 2024. Don't have the numbers yet, so everybody go out there and look it up yourself. All right. <laughs> That's it. Big Finding numbers. them guarantees and that going to be, I don't know, guaranteed money going to be shouting that thing. Man, he better yeah, guarantee. He going, his going got to be in, it got to be incentive late. Yeah. <laughs> and that ain't no knock on either side. We're giving you some bread and some security, but we're also protecting right. ourselves in case you end up injured again. You know what I mean? That's that's when we, I think he, you know what I mean. I think to that point though, where he where they think he's that injury prone, because th- this injury, yeah, that came out this time, I think he could have played, and all the you know he could have. I think they were being more cautious with him. Um, mm-hmm. I know they they came to a point where he probably wanted to play once they got back into the playoff mix, and they was like, um, nah, this dude just took us to the Super Bowl last year, so we we gonna let you rest. We're gonna let you rest. He'll be out of here next year. He's playing next year. But yeah, I don't think this one right. was as serious. But the fact that they held him out makes him look even more injury prone than he probably really is. But yeah, but yeah. no, if they did that, I ain't got no problems with it. Protect yourself. <laughs> right, and, and and the Knicks take another L. Kyrie, I guess. I don't, you know, I don't know if this is official yet, but uh, the, the Nets made a trade as well. Looks like Kyrie to Brooklyn might be for real, man. So, uh, yeah, Nick fan. Mm. But is, is, is KD going to go there with him? Because now I'm seeing if KD doesn't work out, the Knicks need to throw their hat in the Kawhi Leonard sweepstakes. I'm like, just give up, man. Because if those dudes that you knew were coming there, if they don't come there, it's going to be the same old story in New York. They're going to end up with somebody that's washed. Like when they brought in um Amari, and then he said the Knicks were back. <laughs> Back, back from what? We really don't know, but the Knicks are back. Yeah, Kimba and some other some other guy who's gonna get max money that shouldn't get max money. Like I, <laughs> I mean, that's that's probably how this plays out. That's real Nicky. You know what I'm saying? 
But and I Kimba, that's that's hilarious. Hilarious. Y'all, but Kimba don't really Kimba don't do much for winning. He don't contribute much yeah. to winning. He'll get you numbers. Right. And, that's why Kimba got to take that bread. If 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 Kimba Charlotte offers that right. bread, Kimba got to right. get wealthy because Kimba got to get that. Super Kimba match. can't be out here trying to play for a winner. Kimba got to get rich. Yeah. Right. If if he can't be the number three guy on a super team or in, or at work, you know, at two, then he, yeah, take the supermax in Charlotte. Don't go any damn where. But the only problem is if you're Charlotte, do you act? I mean, do you really get at him? Like I know PR wise, it'll be bad if you don't offer it to him. But bro, that is a yeah, lot. Yeah, you can't really get yeah, at him. You can't get at him. They're, they're another. They're another franchise that ain't gonna have choices though. So they're like, we need somebody that's gonna get fifty every once in a while. <laughs> we Yo, know, man, the arena's gonna be empty either way. Kim ain't filling up the arena and selling hot dogs. Like right. when they give him that deal, they are resigned to the fact that all we're doing is selling tickets. We ain't doing much else. <laughs> speaking speaking of this, the whole KD and Kyrie, people think that Nike might have mistakenly, you know, leaked KD's free agency decision. Um, he has a, a shirt. They have a shirt on their website that says Stay True, Easy Bucket KD. And on the back of it, it has all the places he's played. And, it, you know, it has Fort Washington, Maryland, Martha Wilson, Virginia, Oak Hill, Rockville, Maryland, um, Austin, Texas. And he went to college, Seattle, Oklahoma City, Oakland. And the last one is San Francisco. And we know they haven't moved to San Francisco yet. So Nike's either trying to stir some things up or they made a mistake that they weren't supposed to make. I think it's the, the former. I think they're just stirring things up. But what happens if he Me does too. leave? Like, how are these shirts going to make any money? <laughs> if it got San Francisco on there. So, I don't know. <laughs> who hey, who the hell is over at Nike club, now? What the hell going on, bro? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. But Maybe. Um, didn't Golden State, didn't the Warriors play a couple of games in, in San Francisco a few times? Maybe preseason or something? I think so. That's going to be there. But that's going to be there. I don't think, I don't think that was oh, a we mistake. Just talking about, we, we, we were just saying because that's in the same mark that we included them. In 2019, attention is attention, man. So it's not, it's not beyond Nike or these companies to troll to get a little bit of attention, you know, and cause a little bit of controversy. They're going to ship whatever shirts was made, you know, overseas once Katie goes to uh, Brooklyn, whoever he goes. <laughs> True that, man. Like that. And by the way, do y'all, do, y'all think, do y'all think Katie's stuff, y'all think his joint is really torn and they just like, you know, faking it out? Or, or what y'all think about his injury? I heard people uh, say I mean, that it looked like they were icing his, like he had an ice wrap around his Achilles last night. I wasn't looking. Yeah, yeah. If y'all check uh, Dr. Chow on Twitter, I don't know if y'all ever checked him out, but I, I watch him for football stuff. But he he always goes to video and looks at injuries and tries to, you know, diagnose as best he can. He's a former medical guy for the Chargers. Uh, he had a lot to say mm-hmm. about KD last night, especially that Achilles part you just talked about. So, yeah, this injury could be a lot worse than what they were letting on. How could they man? possibly hide that, though, especially with him becoming a free agent? Maybe that's true that he's signing back with them because maybe they took him after that because there's no way you can withhold that information if you're about to have a bunch of teams bidding on you. That's crazy. Right. Unless they're just trying to wait till after the finals because they're trying to, you know, you got to hold that over the Raptors' head like one of these games KD might come back. So y'all better be prepared. <laughs> I don't know what they're doing. Yeah, and, and they could kind of be bending the team KD because they've kind of, you know what I mean, they kind of, made sure to make sure everybody knew Steph was the main attraction over the years and kind of rubbed him the wrong way a few times. And they might just be trying not to make any mistakes. And if his team want to roll with it like this, that's how they're going to roll with it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, if we find out that thing is torn, I'm going to be shocked. That's crazy. That's crazy. Yeah, that's a game changer if it is, man. And, uh, Salute to the boy. Um, Y'all man Paul Pierce finally admitted to what – you know the the legend says because I, I I hadn't even heard that rumor until this year that in game one of the twenty the two thousand eight finals when he went out in the wheelchair <laughs> people people zoomed in on his shorts and it looked like he had a little stain on the back of his shorts so Paul Pierce on <laughs> TV last night admitted he had to go out in the wheelchair because he had to go to the bathroom so. 
Jalen and Chauncey, you know, they kept egging him like you needed a wheelchair to go to the bathroom. And he basically said, well, something had happened. So, <laughs> so I think he finally oh, went to the finals. Game one of the finals. I think he sharted on himself. <laughs> Shout out to the Hall of Famer who doesn't believe in fitness, which is why oh, yeah. that would happen Nerf. to him. Eating bad, not taking care of his body, he would be the looking like Larry Holmes, flabby sick dude. Who is so his body was like, loose and flabby. Exactly. That he yo. would be the one. Yeah. More, yo, more shameful that actually, wheelchair, Dwayne Wade or him, though? Which one's more shameful, him or Wade? Uh, Paul Pierce has always been more shameful because he was, he was selling it, though, man. Like... He was grabbing. He was grabbing his knee. Then the camera pan away. Cause he got the other knee in his hand. And then ran out like Larry Bird. Then <laughs> to save the day. Yeah. <laughs> True that. But hey, man, appreciate y'all letting me on, man. Y'all hold it down. No doubt. Visual, All man. right, good brother. Salute. All right, we're at next week. Yeah, Paul Pierce was. He was on one that night. <laughs> Yo, Paul Pierce, Paul Pierce is like going to end up having, and it's funny, right? Because, um, and shout out to a friend of the show, Mel Hill. She had a uh, Charles Barkley on her podcast, and she said that, um, kind of him. She said like the word in the industry is that all these other shows like ESPN, the NBA TV, like they actually go into the off season saying we got to find a Charles Barkley for our network. Like Barkley is that popular? They said he's, they said he's possibly more popular as a um, TV show guy than he was as a player, because people even forget how good of a player he was. Yeah. And they said and the all the is, networks, like, that's like that, that's what they say in their meetings. They actually have meetings where, like, yo, we got to find a Barkley. And he trashes. Paul Pierce is trying to step in that role, though. He trashes the people that work there about what they get paid. He's like, you ain't walk, working me like a dog and paying me what they paying them. Yeah. <laughs> Yo, he's about how he Yo, cause I, but but I think I think Paul Pierce is trying to I think Paul Pierce is trying to fill that spot because he'd be out there clowning, he'd be like yeah. farting on TV, oh. saying everything out of pocket, um, but you know what? incorrect. You know, maybe he wasn't faking though. The way he was in the wheelchair, rocking back and forth and ailing, like I've had the bubbles before and been on the toilet, rocking back and forth in pain. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> yo, so he might he might not have been faking. We just might have just oh. read that the wrong way because we didn't know what was Yo, going on. Yo, I've been there before too, and you and you talking to yourself like I'm never gonna eat like that again in life. I promise you. And the fact, you know what I mean? He probably like <laughs> making yourself, on the stage. <laughs> making he probably yourself was in the wheelchair prominent. clenching. He was trying to clench. Hurdle <laughs> <laughs> his head out. So he probably waited till they got out of camera's view and probably just let it all loose on that wheelchair. Had Yo. to take a shower. Yo. And then, <laughs> Now that he admitted, so, I know it's much worse than we imagined. I'm, I'm sure you have to take a shower. You about, like, um, <laughs> some other you anything for you, Jimmy? Yo, about these networks? Huh? Does this reveal change anything uh, for you with, with, with the truth? Oh, yeah, because that's oh, kind of why Jimmy like... ain't mess with Bull like that. I mean, oh, Jimmy I a Vegas like fan Bull. anyway. I don't like Bull, Bull Yeah. yeah. I don't like the I, I don't like the way that he talks about other players. Like here's the thing though, I don't need you to be a cold off. But he'd be like downplaying cats that we know are great. Like he'd be like, Yeah, Kobe was all right. Like, you know what I mean? Jerry was but cool. It's, but like, it's, you know what it is. It's all for him though. It's, it's all for you know, for his story. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But listen though, <laughs> Devin, you brought up something I just want to make a quick point real quick, right? A quick point real quick, that was drawing. But um <laughs> So the report came out a couple weeks ago. That Stephen A. Smith is not like the highest paid person at ESPN. Yo, yep. but the thing is, cause if you break he down what he makes per hour work, he might work. He he might make like minimum wage. They be working this man ungodly, cause it don't yeah, matter every time I turn the TV on. Boxing, dog, he TV, got a radio show, he got like three TV <laughs> shows, five different shows. Yeah. Yo, he has no time to spend that bread. And he'd be at the games. <laughs> he'd be at the games, right? He'd be at the games that end at like 2 a.m. and then be right. on TV like 7 a.m. Interviewing people and then talking after the interviews. Yeah. Barkley right. And then go to he a right. radio show. Like a dog for that money. Meanwhile, Barkley is in the studio for a few hours a night making the same music he was making. 
Man, listen, man. Shout out to, shout out to the um, hardest working man in sports, man. How, let, let, we got to get out of here, though. Thank you, brothers and sisters, for joining us for another war room. Shout out to everybody in the chat, Facebook, Twitter, and the group chat. All the calls we got through, we appreciate those we can get to. We apologize. Remember, tune in next week. A lot of our here. Oh, man, as we continue our coverage of the finals, we'll also catch you up on everything happening around the world of sports. So until then, enjoy your weekend. Enjoy the start of next week, and we'll see you right back here. Catch everything we do, all of our social media, blogs, webcast, network, podcast at the hub of warmsports.com. Pick up my book, Sports the Book at Sports.com or at the hub of warmsports.com. But until next time, everybody, don't upset mediocrity. Be steadfast in the war against the and we'll see you chumps on top. All the blueprint, yo. Every Thursday, six to eight, they do this. Shout out to Dez, PJ, B. Austin, Doc Bay on replay. Uh, WarRoomSports.com. Get that mobile app. It's not dial. Call it three two three fourteen double twelve. They be going and you sensitive then oh well. Yeah. Physical podcast, the tough push. Uh, Show time like magic in the block push. Magic. Listen alive, push one to join in. Rip your team or listen for your enjoyment. Hip hop dollars, pit stop and knowledge. Uh, Should be in sports credits, I ain't talking college. E- Five guys, no beef though. Four thrift secrets, but the streets know. Bellafani, I got a chief flow. Uh, KC, royalty, I'm in beast mode. Two hours, get your game up. Uh, who's the best in sports cast? You better name us. What real sports? Sports, www.warroomsports.com. What? Ain't no more to it.